no interest in the multiplayer stuff, though. Just the PC stuff. Battlefield Viet- yes, Battle Battlefield Band Company Vietnam. Just fucking fortunate son as you take off in the helicopter every time. So good. So good. One of the best licensed soundtracks of all time. All right, chat room, it's time to say hi, YouTube. For the live viewers and the VOD, we're gonna jump back into our fortress here. So I have plans for today. I was thinking about this last night going, all right, so this fortress has been violent. And that's putting it politely. This fortress has been something. So what we're gonna do is clench because sieges are constant. We're getting attacked multiple times a year. Uh, yes, we have the ability to completely obliterate them as they attack us. However, however, I need to turn the tide. So what I'm going to do is, on one hand, I'm going to be building this. No, we can't get outside just yet because things are still locked. On one hand, we're going to be building glass over top of the top of the volcano. O over top of the top of the volcano. That is one of the most convoluted things I've said all day. Um, we're going to be build. We're going to be covering this with glass. I'm going to be continuing to beautify the inside of the fort. I'm going to be continuing to beautify my defenses. But on top of that, we're going to go steal a book. The next thing, the, the other thing that we're going to do once we've stolen a book is the thing that I'm going to start doing right now. Also, we lost a bunch of dwarves in the last fight. Is the thing that I'm going to start doing right now, which is this place has dragons. This dark goblin po fortress of flea poison. We are going to raid, steal livestock, and send my best squad. So we're going to send them out to go do that. I'm going to try and steal as many as I can by the end of spring. Once we've done that, we are going to start attacking large locations. They have cave dragons, these guys. I have a couple of them. I think I have six in the fort right now. Not, not these little beak dogs, these guys. But they're war trainable. Once you've war trained animals and assigned them to your military, in my experience, the military gets almost no... I need to move. It's the urns of automation. Uh, no, can I not move? I guess I can't move somebody from a squad to a new squad. Uh, Zassit, I'm just gonna real quick. I can't even remove you. Um, Amethyst, I'm gonna put you back in charge of this squad. Just so that I can remove this dwarf and put you in charge here. There we go. Um, then. I, let's actually go here. Hunter. Nope. Animal. Nope. I have one peasant in the fort. Jeez. It's like no peasants. How about gem cutters? Let's just, just let's just add some gem cutters to this squad. That aren't named. Sure, Hexlin. You'd like to be a the bone the bone doctor. Sure, I can give you the bone doctor. I'm just tossing dwarves that are not named into the Marks Dwarves so they can go train. The squad is decently stacked. The squad is empty. Okay. So, um, before I name that dwarf, give me a second, excellent. Let's do a real quick tour. This is kind of the main layer of the fortress. We did some beautifying yesterday. Uh, this is the main tavern layer. This is my artifact vault. We have our trading room right here. These upper layers are mostly bedrooms. And unfinished spaces, bedrooms, 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 uh, our side entrance, as well as the top floor of our library, and then the prison cells for my were creatures. If we go down, these lower layers are storage and crafting. Over here is most of our metal industry. Uh, storage and crafting, as well as food, uh, more bedrooms, and this is soon going to become my dragon pen. And most of my elephants are down in the basement. Um, once we start sending the elephants out for war, because I'm going to war train them pretty soon, they are going to be constantly attacking things. And that is the goal, is to have them constantly attacking things. Uh, this is my first layer of tombs. We have another layer of tombs, and of course, many more layers of tombs. Um, 
down here is caverns, and then second caverns, and then third caverns, and in the third caverns is where I am farming my elephants, because that's the only one with water. Also a lot of vomit, but that's unrelated to the water. The elephants keep eating all of the um, food down here, so the amount of space that the elephants have is actually pretty limited. I'm trying to move some of them back up here real quick, because there's more stuff growing up here. They just clear through all of the edible like fungus so fast it is very difficult to keep them alive here so i i'm doing what i can remind you to come back in three hours and 40 minutes uh spleen there will be a um community post on youtube 30 minutes before the interview goes live if that helps it's already scheduled Twitch and driving. Don't Twitch chat while driving. You had the urge to play a colony sim and you started with Keeper Royal Isle. That game is really good. I, I, I wish that I had time to play more of it. I think is actually the best way to put it. Um, bodies are still being placed in tombs. Nero Keys' body is actually being placed in a tomb right now, which it's a bloody shame that we lost Nero Keys. Nero Keys got caught up in the fighting in the last siege. Um, which was pretty tough, but on the bright side, everybody's still alive. Today, yes. Um, so today at 2 p.m. Pacific time, right now it's 10.30 a.m. Pacific time, um, Tarn Adams and maybe other people? I don't know. I'm assuming it's just Tarn. Uh, will be joining me on stream, and we will be talking about Dwarf Fortress. Can we get a rundown on the name doors? That's another thing I need to do, yes. I was just skimming YouTube chat to make sure I missed anything. Also, thanks everybody on YouTube for tuning in. Um, of course, I do pay more attention to the Twitch chat, but I do see both of you. Um, so the name dwarves who are alive currently <clears throat> are Devilish Potato, Amethyst, Anander, Arande, Ashtol, and At Atis Cyclops Slayer, Baby Blueford. Baka Glass, Bench, and Big Bang the Third. Black Flag Redneck, Bonesaw, who hasn't... Okay, I think I need to remove Bonesaw from the military. Um, for a few reasons. One, I think they need... I think they're having trouble equipping clo... Yeah, okay. You've got some sensory nerve damage. Um, and two, because um, I just... You need to just go be a noble. Just go be a noble, dwarf. Just, just go strip your clothes off, and hopefully you can go get clothes. Um because you're walking around on a crutch. At least it's a pretty crutch. It has exceptionally worked grizzly bear bone in it. Um, so let's let's keep let's keep rolling down the names. Uh, Bonesaw, where were you? Uh, Bonesaw, who's pissed. Uh, Brr, Brr, Bah, uh, Danathor, and Dragon, as well as Elfie Bean, All Out Rain, and of course Geotrack Gaius and Gordy Castro. Uh, Geotrack is the leader of the fortress who dreams of ruling the, in the world who was uh, captured by goblins for a good chunk of time. Um, who, you know, let's just say, agreed with the queen when she said she wanted to join the military so that when she went off and died, Geotrack wasn't even remotely upset. Uh, Grunty Thirst as well, Hand Chest as well as Judosi and Just a Robotic Cow, as well as Lazy Man, Lucky Soft and Lyagushka, Metroid John, and Moma is Wolfie, as well as uh, Napalm Sideburns, Neokai, Notokasa, Notrum, and Orange, the Holy Orange, which was way too fitting. Is also very happy, by the way. Orange is ecstatic about their life. Uh, and uh, Power Tools and Beer, Radbug, and Raging Cave, of course, Rolf, Royal Green, Salty Tempest, Spanchwa, and Stone, Telen Artho, and the Suited Giraffe. I don't know why I always say their name that way. Um, and uh, Transfem, as well as Traveling trans Transversely, uh, Van Ori, my great militia captain, and Winter Z, the very happy Sacred Sheen. Uh, Xylium, the very long title, Plant Harvester, and that is everybody who's currently named. So, <clears throat> excellent. You wanted a bone doctor. So I hear you want a bone doctor. Would help if I typed the word bone. Uh, would you like this bone doctor, who is currently cleaning a patient and stressed? Melt, melt, metal duping in the future? They already nerfed a lot of metal duping. If you're metal duping, that at this point I think is up to you, isn't it? 
Like, if you want to do that, you can do that. You need to remember that there are exploits and things that have been intentionally left in the game for a very, very, very long time. Uh, two major examples are crushing stuff, stuff with drawbridges and um, quantum stockpiles, both technically bugs. Um, most things that you melt down now uh, gives you a fraction of a bar when you melt it down. And so you need to melt down many, 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 many individual items to get a full bar. So if there are still items that, like, give you more than one bar back or a bar back, I'm unfamiliar with it. No, there's they, they're never going to change quantum stock buzz. They've, they've confirmed that. That's just a mechanic at this point, which is why I'm saying that they're not going to change that. So I, I, have, to, I have to ask, what still allows you to do metal? Because under my, like, awareness... Items that you melt down now don't dupe metal. So, where where are you still duping metal? Because actually, I'm un, I'm unfamiliar if there are still metal dupable items in the game. Still alive? You haven't seen yourself in a while. If you, no, you are still alive. Follow. Yep. Yeah. Anyone else getting a labor strike shortly after embark with the experimental branch? Are you making uh, meeting zones? Because dwarves do need to socialize. Uh, it could also be agitated wildlife locking your dwarves in combat. Because if there is a bird, let's just say 15 Z levels, that is agitated, uh, that your dwarves can see, they'll get stuck staring at it, freaking out. Um, those are the two things I know that could cause that. Um, but no, I, I haven't had that happen at all. Should be a vanilla stockpile feature? Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm in two minds about that. I think people should have to learn how to use minecarts. And it gives you more reason to learn to use minecarts. It's like a benefit of minecarts currently. I wish they actually had labor strikes. Like, I wish they had the ability to go on strike post getting a guild hall. Like, if you didn't make their guild, like, when they demand a grand guild hall, if you don't make the grand guild hall, they go on strike until you make it a grand guild hall. I'd be down for that. That'd be fun, but it would also suck. But, you know. Uh, so this dwarf here is going to be named Ex... Oops. Exa... Lim. Excellent. Excellent. You are the creator of Umarast Suvagath, whatever that be. And you are current... I thought you were standing stationary. You are cleaning a patient, so you're running all the way down to my very far away bucket filling space to uh, fill a bucket. Um... And you probably need some new clothes. He never fails to seek out the most stressful and even dangerous situations. Is intellectually stubborn, rarely changing his mind to agree with somebody else. Bone go here, not there. I refuse to agree that Bone go there, even though Bone definitely shouldn't go there. Um, he is quite comfortable with others that have a different appearance or culture, and it tends to make a small mess with his own possessions. He does not have a great aesthetic sensitivity, and he is conflicted by this, as he values artwork and his creation. He is slow to anger, and he tries to do things correctly each time. He tends to not be swayed by emotional appeals and doesn't focus on material goods and is not inherently proud of his talents and accomplishments. He doesn't often feel lustful, always takes a deep breath whenever he's surprised, and he needs alcohol to get through the working day and does not mind being outdoors at least for a time. He dreams of creating a masterwork someday, and this dream was realized. He personally values war. He per sorry, he personally values peace over war. There you go, I can read. And dislikes cooperation. Sees life as unfair and doesn't mind it that way. And, uh, hold on, gotta pause. Don't know what that is. Uh, and doesn't care about nature one way or another. What was that? A uh, carpenter was found dead. Oh, okay, that's far away. Uh, Drew Scriver, thank you very much for checking out a gift to Mattisu the Kobold and Sits. Thanks very much for the Prime subscription for an 11th month. And I think I missed something in chat. Probably did. Sup, Weeb Trap? It'll be fun for five seconds. Yeah, I agree. Handsome dwarf cancels build all. Reason. Reason. Riot. Everybody's dying. Are you putting in the stockpile? Yeah, it seems like it. Okay, so I probably need to make more tombs. Actually, ammo and coins because the stacks can be split. So most of the time, when ammo is fired, it's destroyed, right? Like if if ammo is fired and hits a target, a large portion of it is actually destroyed and not reusable. So I don't see that as a huge issue. I think that if you are intentionally trying to dupe metal, um, you have to go through some pretty specific things to do that. 
at that point, I would almost say it's up to you, mate. If you want to dupe metal, dupe metal. Um, as far as like, will they ever fix it? I mean, they they've they've changed the balancing for a number of things over the years. I don't have any direct questions about that though. The thing is, when I do these interviews, I try and keep them kind of on a topic. And the topic of this one is obviously adventure mode, right? Because adventure mode's coming out in less than a month now, or like a month now. It's basi basically a month. Um, so that's where most of my questions are targeted. More quality of life and bug fixy things, I'm kind of not going to be asking as much this time, or whatever that's worth. And I think that the priority for the next one will be a little bit more bug fixy slash quality of life thingies. I think that maybe a better person to ask about that stuff, considering Tarn hasn't even been working on fortress mode. I'm gonna add that shit. Considering Tarn hasn't even been working on fortress mode, I think the more pressing concern currently is... Or rather, the person to be asking about bug fixing quality of life would be Putnam. So that would be something that I would ask him. I would ask her in the next video I do with her. Priox, thank you very much for keeping that sub alive for a 15th month. Welcome back, dude. You think leggings are a big one? They cost one bar and yield 1.5? Yeah, I... Because so many... Okay, so like, let, let, let's throw out an example here. If you make 200 sets of iron armor, okay? And one portion of that armor gives you more back than you melt. And you want to make higher quality armor, so you melt all of the armor. Um, and one of those items gives you more, I don't see that as a game-breaking issue, personally. If you are making 200 sets of leggings and melting them down to dupe them, that's your decision. <laughs> um, the, 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 the giveaway, Midnight Deary, uh, I always call you Midnight Dreamy. Midnight Dreary, uh, is Putnam's icon has a trans flag behind it. So she has a masculine voice, but it, if you can kind of put two and two together there. So I go by the pronouns that she uses on Discord, which is she, her. So just being polite. What's the best way to make tombs fast if you don't want to make separate rooms for every single coffin? Do you use DF hack? Durin? Because if you use DF hack, place all the coffins. I just need to do this real quick. There we go. Like this. Hit DF hack and type in burial hyphen C. And that'll designate them all as colon, colon, colonist, citizen. Last North, minute hype. Whatever. Um, tombs. All at once. Now I have to go delete all these things. <laughs> I didn't think that through. But yeah, that, that's the quick way to do that. Actually, this is the easier way to do this. Go here. I can't wait until we get the official search functionality for this. There we go. Where's this? Oh. That never got built? What? The heck? Thank you, animal. Or not animal. Elphibi. Staring at the wrong name. <clears throat> for the dollar. Appreciate you. Looking forward to the interview. Thanks for making it possible. Crypt beer. Cheers, Lucky Soft. Thanks for the 16th month. Tarn makes it possible. I'm I'm just here. Well, I mean it's it's confined, so of course it feels guilty. Wouldn't you feel guilty if you were confined? Jamazer, thank you very much for the five bucks. And Drew, Drew Scriver, thanks for the singular gift of a month of subscription to Durin. Where's Alaf at? Oh, you're going back to get provisions. You finished your you finished your lunch on the way out. That makes sense. What are you, dwarf? You're on your way out, sweet. You dig them a one grave, Z level down, vanilla considered the holes each their own. I mean, that's kind of what I'm doing with this, yeah. I mean, if, if you just dig, like, a, a, if, if you want to do it in a more vanilla fashion, just dig, like, a trench, dig one across, and then it, you can just multi-tomb them all. Like, I, I'm just down here, right? And I've dug all these out, so I can just go boom, boom, 
boom, boom. That one I kind of screwed up, but boom, 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 boom. There. Just looking for any more I haven't placed yet. And then I just do this, and then go to multi, click, drag. Ten more, done. A lot of tombs. Yeah, because um, apparently visiting barons that die need tombs. I learned this recently. Okay, let's, uh, speaking of tombs, I need to make Bonesaw a tomb. Bonesaw says that they are one foot in the grave already. Um, I'm also going to make a pen pasture down here. And just put the dragons in here. Gem setter has been taken by a faint moon. We will follow you. Sansu. Okay, so the one thing I haven't had a chance to check yet. Um, Hexel and the Bone Doctor. Uh, you worship Kashbin uh, Desis Neurom, which is a god I'm not familiar with, which is the Creed of Gulfs, which is a less popular religion in this fortress. Um, you are a Grand Master Weaver, by the way, and you actually know quite a lot of astronomy and geography. Uh, as well as a little bit of natural history, uh, you know many. Po you've read many books. You're very. You're a very well read dwarf, um, and you're currently dragging a, a dragon down to its new pen. Uh, fell moods only occur if a dwarf is as stressed as they possibly can be, being haggard, and then go into a strange mood. And even then, not all dwarves can do that. Also, they've already begun a mysterious construction. That's good. Just, uh, we're gonna get another perfect amethyst, I think. In fact, I'm going to go up to this room. I'm going to open this up so I can get that put away. Just waiting for Alas to leave the map now. Who's still trying to get provisions? What provisions are you getting, mate? You got a singular. You got plump helmet, singular. Okay, well. <laughs> Could have grabbed the meal. What? Huh. I think, um... I could be mistaken here. I think I just got some collateral damage from my, uh... Trash disposal. Um... <laughs> whoops. Uh, let's open the safer door, shall we? And um, also, real quick, just engrave some slabs for those poor dwarves. That's unfortunate. I kind of knew that that could happen, but didn't expect it to actually happen. So, you know, whoops. Yeah, you should only expect fell moods if the fort's already in a bad way. Uh, fell mood is something that, ha like, I have a couple dwarves that could have fell moods um, in this fort right now. I think Bonesaw potentially could. Some of my military dwarves potentially could. The baby could if they could walk, but babies can't, like, do strange moods. Um, like, this swords dwarf probably could. Um, I wouldn't mind a fell mood. Fell mood would be fun. Uh, I'm also going to slaughter all of my beak dogs because I don't feel I need them. Oops, that's the wrong. Search for the form. Let's go beak dogs. Woo woo! Thank you very much for the $30. And sorry you missed the train. Ever so slightly. But appreciate you, mate. And thank you to everybody who's tuned in already. I've already beat yesterday's view count. Um, you can still send in questions, but it's very unlikely they'll be answered. So what I do is, um, the evening before, or in this case, the morning of an interview, I filter out, or I go through all of the questions, and I, um, I go through all the questions, and I copy them, basically, over to a new document. And then, because I, I, started, I did this at 7 in the morning, and then I copy them over to a new document, so I have two documents. One that's still getting submissions, and then one that's, no nope, like, separate. And then I cut the separate one down, look, find the most commonly asked questions, and then basically 
use those as a way to queue up my own interview portion, which is usually like the first 30, 40 minutes of just me talking to Tarn. Um, so my own interview portion has been written down and finalized. And uh, as well as there's about 40 questions added onto that, which are just from various audience members. Um, so it's just a matter of If I run out of questions, if we get through them all, then I'll go back to that new document and skim it and see if there's anything else I can tack on to the end. So theoretically, you could. If you have, like, an absolute banger necessary needed to be asked question, uh, possibly, but at this point, unlikely. You pray that your dwarves will never be unhappy. You do not look forward to a random guy turning your mare into a fine leather loincloth. It'd be a bone loincloth, more likely. Uh, so the dwarf has created Saxul, the gem cutter has created. Thedustvesh, Thedustvesh, an amethyst amulet, and offers it to the living fire. Thedustvesh. You know, chat, I have a question. Do I make this another symbol of my champion amethyst because it's an amethyst, or do I put it on that pedestal and forget about it? What do you think? I kind of think we should give it to amethyst. It's too fitting. Too fitting. I mean, she's already walking around with a amethyst gem, so. This is an amethyst amulet. All craft store ship is of the highest quality. On the item is an image of a blueberry bush in amethyst. It's a very shrubby amethyst. Let's see if she comes and picks it up. more the better I mean the more the happier all right let's um go right here because this is where I'm making bone saws tomb what was the artifact your dwarf weave let's find out You're uh, reading ignorance and other topics. It's just a bunch of tweets. <laughs> anyway, uh, ignorance and other topics is the book that you're currently reading. You are the creator of Umer Tast Suvas Geth. It's a treasure of the living fire. It's this. It's this perfect gem. Uh, all craft ship is of the highest quality. Yeah, on the item, it's a perfect clear cut tourmaline. Uh, on the item is an image of Vakar shove tours the human in clear tourmaline. So it's a perfect gem with an image of a human on it. Probably somebody you knew. So checks out. Yeah, there you go. Although I would not agree that Twitter is bliss, but you know, I'm gonna double this stairwell up just so there's more space. Uh, there is a statue there. Somebody knocked it over. The reason there's clothing everywhere right now is because it hasn't been disposed of yet or hasn't been put into dwarves' uh, living quarters yet. Why are you taking so friggin' long to leave the map, mate? Okay, you're leaving to raid Flea Poison now. You have two plump helmets. Excellent. Let's see if he makes it off the map. Lock the treasure room? Sure. There's very few guests actually in the fort that would be able to steal stuff, but we should do that. We should, in fact, do that. Oh, the lever, Dorf. I don't know. We need to be kind to our to our friends who like other games as well. In fact, many people also like that game here, so we need to be nice. Remember, chat room, the key to disagreeing with other people is being kind, because if they're mean to you, then they're the bad guy. And also, dwarf left the map. Excellent. So I need to find more military dwarves, because I am in a situation right now where I need to train a good chunk of military. So I need to find a few dwarves that would do okay in the military. 
Most of them don't really care about anything anymore. Storf seems fine. Bambool, you can be my new leader. Oh, fair enough, yes. Fair enough. No, I, I'm just... You are okay. For, for complete clarity, I just don't want arguments to start more than anything. What do you mean? Out of curiosity, you fully came to the conclusion that RimWorld is, in its own way, played as a whole other game. Naturally, it's, it's a different game, yes. I'm just curious about how you were in de denial before. But happy to help, I guess? Honestly, that video is mostly me talking from somebody who works in games marketing's perspective. Uh, I've seen many games get completely crushed underneath another game's release many times. Possibly my favorite example being uh, Titanfall, a game that Call of Duty. Literally nobody bought it because everybody was playing Call of Duty. Anyway, Lanix wants you to post beers. Cheers, Lanix. How you doing? Fort's going all right. How's Lanix's day been? Given to uh, emotional fights of fancy, is occasionally overindulges and often feels lustful. So by art and natural beings is the idea of gold life. All right, English, you too. I-N-G, I-S-H. Uh, Celeste, we gave you another amethyst item. I'm not sure if you were here for that, but... This squad down here, I'm just going to double check that they're wearing the right uniform, which is just any metal armor. They're going to trade here. Trade? Train. Train, train, train. How about you? I'm in Siege Operator. Good focus. Thrill Seeker! of raising a family respects the law, believes the idea of war is utterly repellent and would have peace at all cost. Excellent. Uh, I didn't... Uh... Okay, so looking at Twitch chat, I've had no issues with OBS. So if you guys disconnect, yeah, it seems like restarting is probably the way to go. Um... My view count's still fine. Nothing really dropped. Refreshing to it. Yeah, everything seems fine. Yeah, just, just, it, it, no issue on my end. At the end, for whatever it's worth. Uh, YouTube chat. Did you guys get any drops or anything? Because Twitch chat is reporting some dropping, droppage. All I needed was a refresh. I'm assuming that was like, no, that might have actually just been Twitch pushing a player update. <laughs> must have been Twitch. Yeah, must have been. Must have been, because it wasn't me. My, my OBS is perfectly stable. I've actually been vaguely looking into a different ISP. I'm trying to figure out if it's worth cutting my upload speed from, like... It's about 350 uh, up, upload uh, during peak times and about 1,000 at night. I'm wondering if it's worth it to cut my upload speed to save 80 bucks a month, but increase my download speed. Just 2,000 error. All right. Um, something else I mentioned yesterday that I talked about a little bit. I've been given permission by Kit Fox to stream on the Dwarf Fortress Steam page. The problem is, I don't think I can stream on both Dwarf Fortress and Twitch and YouTube at the same time. Or the Dwarf Fortress Steam page and Twitch and YouTube at the same time. Seems to work, abstract part. Um, so, I need to figure out when and how to do that, or if I can, in fact, stream on both at the same time. And if I can, if some of you know any solutions on how to do that, on how to stream on both, of the, on all three concurrently, send me a DM, because I'd, I'd love to figure out how to do that. Because I need to stream with a different frame timing, which from what I can tell requires changing base level OBS settings and not just a different fork of a stream. And if I change the frame timing, my stream will crash constantly on Twitch. So, and same with YouTube, because Steam is um, weird and antiquated and doesn't like to update their shit. So, 
As we slowly recruit more dwarves from the military, inclined to abstract, obstinate values peace. Tranquility. Yeah, that too. Elfie. It is good that you can see both. How's it going? Pretty good. Three hours until I chat with Tarn. Just kidding. Oh, man. This is unfortunate. Just got a DM from Clino. Um, he won't be able to make the interview because... Uh, won't be able to make the interview because it's a... Um, he's doing a family thing this weekend. That's unfortunate. I think it might be the first one Clinos missed, actually. Okay. Um, Ed Tob, I think we'll chuck you into the military, too. This is going to be kind of my backup squad that I'm just getting training in the background. Mostly. So they are, you know, just learning to use weapons, basically. They're using whatever we have left. Oh, shit. Main squad's back. Also, they can train up, and then I can move dwarves over to the main squad from this squad. All right, so they running down. This is the place that has the cave dragons. We snuck in and stole livestock from Fleet Poison. Excellent. Let's see what we got. Cross your fingers and hope for Durgans. Couple comments there? A couple, eh? Couple? Couple. You know, honestly, it's 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 kind of it's very funny to me. We we were talking about this earlier, Pet Petinsky, but it's very funny that people assume malice and anger if it's something that they even remotely disagree with. Like, I tried my best to explain my point in that video while being as non-combative and neutral as possible and people are still pissed. <laughs> it's like, you, you can't say things. I think one of the funniest ones, like, one of the funniest comments I got was keep making tutorials and stay in your lane. <laughs> you have absolutely no say over what I make, mate. Uh, little man JP. Uh, good, it's good to see you. Hope you're doing well, mate. Also, I like this. I like this quest. I like this comment. <laughs> so you're saying that there might be space in the DF streaming market next month? The luxurious life and fame of fortune calls. <laughs> oh, it's still OBS. I like your thinking, friend. I like your thinking. Anyway, five cave dragons. I don't block people. Not on YouTube comments anyway. I block people for being um, transphobic, or rather. I, knew, I, I nerf people in my comment sections on YouTube for being transphobic, homophobic, and racist. So if you're yelling about how racist you are in my YouTube comments, I will, I will nerf you in my YouTube comments. If you're being homophobic in my YouTube comments, I will nerf you in my comments. If you're being deliberately mean to somebody with no real malice in either direction, I'll probably nerf you in my comments. If you're just telling me that you disagree and that I'm wrong and I should shut up, that's fine. And you want to know why that's fine? Because you just helped me more, or they just helped me more than they realized by commenting. Because what it's going to do is it's going to make people who agree with them comment and respond back. And it's going to make people who disagree with them comment and respond back, which drives algorithm up, which drives interactions up, which makes YouTube go wee. So to the moon with the anger. Also that. A lot of, like... I can have a conversation with somebody in person, completely disagree, clink the beers together, and have a good day. Um, whereas over the internet, everybody just gets really angry. Um, 
So I always just assume good intentions. And if somebody wants to unsubscribe because of an opinion that I have that it's rude that a game decided to release like on the same day as a game that they are loudly inspired by, uh, oh, oh, okay, that's that's fine. You're entitled to tell me that you think that that's okay. I think it's really rude. <laughs> that's literally it. Um, Zafoy, thank you very much for the YOLO swag, Jesus69420. Uh, and also, three months of support. Appreciate you. Uh, Onimaru Masa, what's up? Also, I have a bit of a head cold today, so if I sound backed up, that's why. I mean, maybe don't do it intentionally, but it is funny when people are just like, I refuse to support you now, or whatever, which I've gotten a couple of, where it's just like, all right, thanks. <laughs> thanks for the, 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 the memories, I guess. That's mostly all it is. And I also have to say this might be the most YouTube algorithm go burr a fucking title I've ever made in my entire life. I'm being honest about that part. It's not really microtransactions, it's DLCs. Microtransactions would be like small transactions for things in game, whereas uh, DLCs is like, they, like, I mean, they make expansion packs, but it does wreck the modding community for three months every single time they do it. All right, so let's get the extra dragons down here. And we're in late spring. We have a month. Let's go hit this spot again. Here's the thing. In theory, DLC is better than microtransact than than microtransactions in my opinion. I would rather that you just sell expansion packs for a game than I would rather you sell expansion packs for a game than FOMO monetize your game, right? Like if you're monetizing your game with a battle pass system, to me that's FOMO monetization, which is just like making people be afraid that they're missing something. And I think that that's kind of toxic. Just it's shitty mentally to a lot of people, myself included. So I would rather you do big DLCs. RimWorld is a weird case because it's a very small team making that game. And that game has sold millions of copies. From a business perspective, they don't need the money. <laughs> Unless they're massively up, like, scaling up the size of the team, which... Th they haven't been? I mean, they're hiring for some other project that they're working on, so maybe they do need the money. I don't know. But if you over-monetize a game, it pushes me away from the game. It's the same reason that I tend to avoid Paradox releases, because they tend to over-monetize. But the issue is it can completely obliterate your modding community. It's the same reason that Skyrim community just freaks out every single time a patch comes out. At the end of the day, I I don't care if they're putting DLC out. I just care that they decided to put it out the same week as Adventure Mode's beta. And I just think that that's rude. That's the entire take, basically. <laughs> Yeah, Klino, yeah. I'm not gonna go start throwing out slander like that. It's like, sis Nico, you can say what you like, but. How you doing today, Klino? Hope you're doing well. Hope your family thing goes well. Also, I'm, I'm hearing from a certain toad in the woods. Uh, that Zach will be joining. So we will have both Tarn and Zach. Um, what was I doing? Beak dogs. Slaughtering beak dogs. Slaughtering beak dogs and stealing dragons is the line for the day.
Yeah, unfortunately, I kind of pissed the internet off this morning, Clino, with a few things, and um, so the the result is I have a feeling I've maybe trapped us in uh, quite a bit of discourse today. But that was my choice. I knew what I was doing. Build up that online engagement. Only I didn't need to make people angry to build up engagement, man. I'm in an ad break, so I will wait. Never thought it would be, get as big as it did. Yeah. I mean, like, they've both helped each other, but it is... Hmm, how do I word this? Rising tides raise all sh rise all sh ra rising tides do in fact raise all ships. However, a rising tide can also flood a town. <laughs> so, Rimworld isn't pay to win. That's that's just incorrect, Cappy. If that's what you're saying, might just be dehydrated. Ew. I've got a, a weirdly annoying head cold, which is passing now because I took some cold meds this morning. Was that referencing Total Biscuit? Uh, no, it was ref. I, it was referencing. Um, unless Total Biscuit ever said something like that, it was referencing uh, Waypoint Radio and uh, their host, who's now actually developing games, named Austin Walker, who uh, hosts a a D and D podcast, which I haven't listened to in ages. Uh, but that he coined that as the outro phrase for Waypoint Radio. Uh, Waypoint Radio was owned by Vice. Uh, they all got laid off and now are called Remap Radio, and I give them $5 a month for no ads in their podcasts now. Although uh, Austin Walker no longer, or hasn't worked with them for quite some time, although occasionally shows up on podcasts to say hi. And he used to always end the shows with, Fuck capitalism, go home. That's a video games podcast. That's all. That's where that quote came from. What a mess. Uh, they've all gotten off better up for it. I mean, like, I think one of the more well-known names in, in that group is Ro uh, would be Rob Zachney and um, Patrick Klepek. But I mean, if you're playing RimWorld and trying to make it into Dwarf Fortress, you're doing it wrong. Play RimWorld to play RimWorld. Mod RimWorld to beat RimWorld. Have fun with it. It's a great game. Like, when people say that I'm, like, attacking at the audience, that's the most perplexing thing to me, because I try my damnedest to do the exact opposite, but... So I'm making and assigning a tomb. Bonesaw. Bonesaw is one of the barons that I've inherited. I also need to give him doors onto this. People love beef. People like to pretend that they're being attacked by things. Because it gives them a reason to be angry. I mean, also based on the like value of the cattle industry, I would say people do actually love beef. You are correct on multiple levels with that statement. Uh, the the thing is, Rim, the thing I'm not gonna talk shit about is Rimworld does put out good DLC. Like they are good expansion packs. They do it the proper expansion pack style. Uh, as for the content in them being comparable with mods, I can't speak to that because I don't play the game. Over here, he has a sword! Yammer was one of the dumbest Microsoft creations ever to come with these teams. You know, true story, I've never used Microsoft Teams, so I have no idea what Yammer is. What the heck's Yammer? <laughs> Like tr being truthful, never used had never had to use Teams. I guess fortunately. Um, bone saw. There we go. Bone saw. You now have your tomb. Are you happy with your tomb? You are in fact happy with your tomb. GeoTrack isn't though. So this is GeoTrack's tomb, right? Yes. Um. Which. 
I should probably give to Just a Robotic Cow and move Geotrax elsewhere. Let's do that. Um, so Just a Robotic Cow can have this one. The mayor. Uh, and if they happen to die while it's assigned, then they get to keep it. Otherwise, it gets assigned to the next mayor. Uh, and then uh, this is the, the the queen's one that she got when she died. So we will check where that stairwell is and make another one, which will be given to Geotrack, which is my duke. Uh, no, that is a green glass floor. Almost as almost left the map. Uh, the mad thing happened on Reddit? Uh, no, the, the, the mad thing happened in the video that I uploaded this morning. Re ironically, I don't think I've ever upset the... anybody on the Dwarf Fortress subreddit with the exception of one person who just kind of hates me for some reason. I'm not entirely sure what happened with that person, but they, like... Whenever I post something, regardless of what it's about, they used... They, for a while they there, they would just, like, downvote it and then respond basically saying I wish this guy would shut up. So either they don't like me personally or they just don't like people who do things on YouTube and Twitch. I, I, I don't know. But there's like one person on Reddit that I know that hates me, but aside from that, people on Reddit generally like me. Generally? I don't really care. <laughs> what does it matter to me? They have a cavern that has 60 layers of air between the floor and roof. That's a very deep cavern. You enjoyed going medieval quite a bit? I might need to look at that again one day. It just looked way too simplistic when it first came out for me. There's always that one guy. Yeah, there's always that one guy. The one guy who really needs a shower. I'm just waiting for this dwarf to move so I have a place to build this. Think of adventure mode would, uh, this would probably be sick to visit in adventure mode with all these windows and such. A lot of forts would be fun to visit in adventure mode, especially because this one has, like, a lot of stuff going on in the basement. I really want to visit the ruins of my last two forts, though. Something I'm very excited to do. Like the story nature of things happen. I like the I, to me honestly, Dwarf Fortress is closer to a god game than a lot of games that try to be like it. I think that's like the easiest genre of reference for me, where it's just like the reason I one of the main reasons I enjoy Dwarf Fortress so much is because it is so much like god games. Nobody really makes god games anymore. It's kind of a lost genre. So yeah, it's it's a pretty unique thing on its own in the way that it plays. But I I like the fact that it has a lot of similarities to god games like removing direct control from the player. Yeah, a little bit more populous. A little bit more populous. Populous was ahead of its time, man. I think that RimWorld is a very good game. Dicron in YouTube chat. I think that RimWorld shares a lot of audience with Dwarf Fortress. And I wish that they both had, I wish that they both, and this kind of actually goes for both, I wish that they would both have the common courtesy to stay out of each other's way when it comes to major updates, because they could both do a lot of damage to each other's possible sales. Um, and by that, I mean RimWorld could do a lot of damage to Dwarf Fortress's sales. So. But also, there is a reality here where I am completely wrong. And if I am wrong, that is fine. I will accept that. I would be quite happy to be wrong, in fact. I saw one streamer last night with three caverns connected by a downward passage. Oh, that's pretty rad. All dry. Wow. Did they have any aquifers on the map, or was it just like a... You know, like that that's another thing that I guess people don't tell you is that if you if you disable aquifers in world gen, it can make the world really dry, which can actually cause dry caverns because there's way less water and moisture in the map. Okay, I really want a cave monster's elephants. Oh, that sucks. Gotta go for a bit. Cheers, Elfie. You know, I 
I would really, really like EA Games to quit being a bunch of, um, to quote a Formula One coach, um, or not coach, uh, team boss who got fired recently. Bunch of wankers. Um, so I, I would very much like them to stop being a bunch of wankers and uh, do the nice thing, the smart thing, and remaster Dungeon Keeper. They don't need to do much. Literally just Dungeon Keeper 1 and Dungeon Keeper 2. Okay, 4K textures, got it. Uh, modern, like, settings, modern usability. And that's all I want. It's not that big of a deal. They could do that very easily, but they don't. God damn it. <laughs> and they gar I guarantee you they won't now with the uh, recent things that they've been talking about. What do I think of the modern competitor replacer? It's not Dungeon Keeper. Dungeon Keeper has a very specific kind of humor that I don't think is replicatable, right? Like what's like if, if I were to if I'm gonna go play a modern Dungeon Keeper ish game, I'm gonna go play Keeper RL. Um, dungeons, I never played. Dungeons two, I got code for and played a little bit, and never streamed. Dungeons three, I never played. Dungeons 4 I never played. And the reason I never played them was because I watched them. I didn't find them funny. Um, I think that being evil in a game like that is a very, very fine line between hysteri hysterics and just kind of hard to watch. And I found like just about everything of Dungeons to be kind of muddy and hard to watch. The one real hope that I had for a proper successor to Dungeon Keeper was... Uh, War for the Overworld, which was an indie game attempt, but that game was more of an RTS, less of a dungeon management game. And the reason I had hoped for it was because I got the same voice actor back for the announcer, but the result was not a great game. Like, they kind of ran out of money halfway through development, and it shows pretty bad, and it's just, it's really clunky, it doesn't feel good. Although, it's a game that's been on sale for two bucks a couple of times. If you can get it for two bucks, it's, it's not bad, but uh, outside of that, it's kind of rough, I guess. Okay, so we did have water. All right. So it wasn't like a no water whatsoever map. That's good, at least. Weird place for you to conduct a meeting, Mr. Mayor. Oh, sweet. Squad is back. Stole more livestock. Three more cave dragons. Four more beak dogs. Maybe they don't have the writing staff? I mean, you can have the best writing staff in the world, but if they don't have a good sense of humor, or the right kind of sense of humor, or... Let's just say you have a great writing staff and your studio is based in Poland and your jokes are hysterical in Polish, but you translate them into English and it just doesn't land. I mean, that, that, that happened a lot with um, uh, cyberpunk. Um, there's a lot of writing in cyberpunk that's just like, huh? And I've been told by people that if you play that game in Polish, it makes a lot more sense, um, which I could totally see. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, so I, it's, a, it's a combination of things. I mean, like, you, you got to remember that Dungeon Keeper was a British game made with very British humor, right? Which is also a reason why, like, I don't particularly enjoy playing these games, but, like, the Two Point Hospital games, I think those games are hysterical. Those are some of the same dudes that made Dungeon Keeper, right? Um, I would like to see the Two Point guys make a Two Point Dungeon. I would love to see that, but I don't know if I'll ever get that. As decent humor? Yeah, that's, a, that's one I never played. The, the dungeon master of Nihal Bjork, or however the fuck you pronounce that. <laughs> Speaking of humor I'm, and, and localization, it's, it's even harder in video games because, like, video game based humor is very, very, very difficult. Let's go to pets and livestock and go dragons. We're gonna war train all of these. We're gonna give all of these to Orange. Orange is just becoming our animal trainer. Also give some of these to Odom, who's also a decent animal trainer. Fortunately, this is a pretty easy task. And I'm 
also going to... Do I even have nest boxes? I haven't looked. No, okay. Well, let's just do rock nest box. Let's just do 10 I guess. But there's a lot of writing in Cyber... Like, I, I haven't played Cyberpunk, right? It's not really my kind of game. But I've watched quite a bit because a lot of my friends streamed it. And there was quite a bit of writing in that game where it was just like, I... Uh, what? <laughs> what are you saying exactly? Like, that is a stunted conversation that doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and it just comes off as bad writing. Yeah, The Witcher also had... The Witcher series definitely has some of that too, yeah. It's just like a, maybe even just a CD Projekt Red thing. Like, or... Or say they play act or however you're supposed to pronounce it properly, but yeah, it's it, there's there's definitely some oddities there. So I'm going to make some statues. Maybe copper statue. Let's do twenty of them. And these are all going to be made of GeoTrack, or look like Ge images of GeoTrack. One was GeoTrack. What's your last name here, GeoTrack? Because we know two of you. Castle Dive, got it. Castle Dive is also a great last name for a dwarf. Castle Dive, GeoTrack, there you go. Born in 498 was two when I started my first fort. Man, so that dwarf got kidnapped and all those beans. Uh, let's go down to here and add some elephants that are not. Pastured into here. Apparently I have those. And I'm also going to go down to Elephant. And I'm going to war train a bunch of elephants. Can I just say that the concept of hunting elephants is one of the funniest concepts in the world to me? Like, genuinely, it is hysterical. <laughs> the idea that you would train an elephant to go hunt for you is just very funny. Just the image of an elephant running across the map just... <laughs> Just like spiking a a raven through the head with its tusk and then dragging it back. <laughs> it's just very funny. Okay, we're gonna send these words out again. Only eighty two? Come on. Gotta at least let them get to adulthood. Two again, robot? Welcome back. And also, thank you very much to everybody who's left a like on the YouTube stream. Appreciate you guys. <laughs> you definitely would die if... <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, you certainly don't want an elephant, you know, to, uh... Can I just say, take of the day? This is, this is, this is a comment that I just saw on my YouTube channel. Take of the day. RimWorld isn't an edgy game. Okay. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Definitely. <sighs> right. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Not sure about that one. Is that, yeah, mm -hmm. Me neither, mate. Me neither. I'm trying to remember now, when was the last time I made a video with over 250 comments? It's been a while. Let's scroll back and find out. Uh, my video about Dwarf Fortress directories didn't get that many. Oh boy, it's been a minute. My complete guide tutorial hasn't gotten that many. Adventure Mode trailer didn't get that many. The last interview I did didn't get that many. Good lord. I had a video get that many comments. It's been months. Months. Maybe even years. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. I'm all the way back in August. <laughs> For reference. 
Uh, into June. June of last year. Into May. Because I can't sort my videos that got the most comments on YouTube, which is really dumb. Used to be able to, but they decided to get rid of that. For some reason, I mean, the last de dashboard re rework. Last time I had a video get more than 250 comments. I'm still scrolling back. I'm into March. <laughs> That's how far back I am right now. I'm into March of 2023. Uh-oh. That can't be good. Oh, Snatchers. It's fine. I'm, I need to figure this out. This is like something that's going to bother me if I don't find this. Into February? Uh, okay, um, the first frame rate update on February the 1st of 2023, which was Putnam's first major patch, uh, the preview for it specifically, when I was doing sizzle tongs, got 210 comments when Putnam, like, was stating that pathing is not the cause of frame rate problems in Dorfort. Um, so that was the last one that got more than 200. Found it. The first video I ever did with Putnam got more than 280 comments. So I had to go all the way back to January 15th of 2023 to find a video that got more than 280 comments. Wow. Both puns are round, not an edgy game. Accurate statement. Yes, you are correct. Uh, where are these snatchers coming from? Well, they're from the barricaded ghoul. I will send these two squaddies out. How many people are in this squad? They're a decent number. More than I thought, actually. For some reason, I thought that squad had been depleted. We're not going to make it very far. Eurist goes running out, who's already tired, but, you know, he's chasing them away. Showing them who's dwarf. Not them. Ranger Rick, how you, how you doing? My first DF tutorial has 204. You mean the first part of the Let's Play or the first one I made? That's what I'm about. Mom's quick. Well, that was pain painless. Okay. So this squad here, Atis. How upset is Atis? Is Atis in a good headspace? Not really. You want to wander. You want to pray. You need to be around friends. You are a legendary spear dwarf. This squad, I'm going to give a break. We're going to leave them as no... Uh, no, not this one. This squad, we're going to give a break. We're going to leave you as no orders. These ones, we're going to leave you training. You guys are going to keep training, doing the thing. And I'm going to take them off of training here. The Foggy Picks, specifically. Because they need to go do crafting and stuff. Um, as for this squad, how happy is Bembool? They're a dabbling axe dwarf. I need to assign these war animals to a dwarf who um, enjoys being in the military and enjoys this process. You're wearing old clothing. Well, what? But you're no longer wearing old clothing. You're dwelling upon it. I mean, come on, man. At least you're satisfied after learning about dodging. Uh, let's... Finish assigning this. Other two, which is up here. Move date is next, next week Wednesday. Hell yeah, dude. Moving sucks. Hopefully it goes smoothly. Geo track. Let's just find them suspended germs. It's right there. Easy peasy. Dune 2 was good. I need to see that. I'm waiting for the theaters to be less busy, though. Congratulations to the generous. Did they put out a new, uh... 
That's actually one of my questions is what's the future of the future of the fortress with the crashing of the uh, of the um, forums? But I'd be very sad if we don't get future of the fortress anymore. But I'm assuming we will because the forums are back up now. But Dune two. I already read the book, so. <laughs> And there's my dad who's like, I liked the first half of Dune and I'm not going to watch Toon Dune 2. And I'm like, wait, why? Or he's like, I, li I like the first movie. Um, and I asked why he wasn't going to watch the sequel. And he says, because I hated the ending of the first book. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I think that that's just kind of funny. It's a great movie. Yeah. Mostly there for the aesthetics. Saw a clip of Life of Brian they used to spoof Dune 2 strip. <laughs> That's funny. More snatchers, probably from the other faction. Yep. It always works this way. Well, you gotta break my heart, goblins. Chase them! Get them, dwarves! I'll catch them. They can't go too far. All right, um, up here. Oh, there's so much crap up here. My God. All right, I gotta do a thing. I gotta make an armor stockpile. By that, I mean an infinity stockpile because this is getting ridiculous. I have so much freaking armor, it is absurd. So I'm going to make a infinite stockpile out of this, um, is what I'm going to do because this is just bonkers. And I'm gonna put it over here, actually. Otherwise, I'm just going to be sitting here with stockpile up to my knees, with stock with stuff up to my knees in armor for the rest of this fortress's existence. You're gonna load from there. We're going to load uh, literally just armor is all I'm going to classify it as. Armor, all armor. Um, and uh, I need to go down here to the bottom, remove these. Wait. Oh, crap. That was my trash. I just removed the wrong one. Okay, so we just had a save. I'm going to go back just... Eh, nah, it's fine. I'll just remake it. It's not that hard. I can just go remake it. <laughs> I just kind of screwed that up. Because trash disposal is this, which I do, in fact, need. It's only three things I need to assign. So you... Make sure I'm going in the right direction. Yeah, it's north. Okay. Um... Kick north. Kick north. Kick north. Every ten. Five. Zero. Okay. That'll do. Um, you down here, you get copper minecart. Down this, that's the one I wanted to get rid of. And you load from the correct place. Okay, so the only thing I need to do then is put a new stockpile in. You've been talking with friends about how Tolkien and Herbert uh, depicted good and evil in the stories for weeks. Since Dune 2, uh, it's sad that they had to tone down the. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, for Just because I t tend to assume that not. Uh, actually, hold on. I may have put that pointing in the wrong direction. Just because I tend to assume that people have not read Dune, be sensitive about, like, what you write about it. Unless it's, like, less related to the movie itself. Because my assumption of this era of Dune is that it's just going to be a lot of people's first ever experience with Dune. Um, which I think is a, a fair assumption to make. Why can't I find armor in this screen half the time? There it is. I always forget where the armor stockpile is, and I don't know why. It's just, okay, we'll leave you at zero. And just set this to zero. Well, eh, actually, we can set it to one. That's fine. Sweet, squad's back again. 
Okay, so we actually got into a fight this time, I think. Oh, oh I see. No, I used the wrong thing. <laughs> we stole, um... I, I forgot to tell them to only get livestock. So they, they stole a bunch of treasures, uh, which is fine. We, we stole some books from them. Oopsies. And uh, did get two cave dragons as well, though. So not a loss, necessarily. Drop down here. Add two more cave dragons. Oh, is this about the forums crashing? Uh, the forums, the Dwarf Fortress forums were down for, what, like two weeks? Something like that. Um, and they had to go back to a backup. They're back up now, though. You've read the entire Dune series. It's very good. I think God Emperor was your favorite. I've only read the first one. I started reading the second one and then uh, met my girlfriend in high school and um, stopped doing everything that wasn't uh, being around my girlfriend. <laughs> because, you know, uh, I... I was doing, I was busy with the rest of life, shall we say. And then just kind of stopped reading fiction entirely, um, which is... More like, more of a me problem than a problem with the books, per se. It's me, not the books. I don't read fiction anymore. Although I keep seeing copies of, like, Dune 1 and Dune 2 and Dune 3 in the used bookstore for, like, or in the in the thrift store I go to to look for electronics for, like, doll, like pennies on the dollar. And I'm always like, hmm. Um, here, I'll, I'll, I'll re I, I kind of stopped talking the second the ad break hit because I didn't have a warning. Rubble Rouser, but TLDR, um, forums, hosting service, went offline, took, like, two weeks to come back online. I have no idea. You, you would have to ask somebody involved, which is why I'm going to ask Tarn, because I have no idea either. I know very little about how that part of the internet works. Not my forte. Somebody in chat might know, um, but I, I do not know. I just know that it happened. Yeah. At least I hadn't sent out my squads yet. The Vile Force of Darkness has arrived. It's not that one dude again, though. And they left. Okay. I just saw a bolt. What? What shot at? I mean, the squad's in. I need to read the last Discord word story. Hi, Salty. Forgot to pause. I always try and pause when I do this, but forgot this time. Cats and salt. By 17 hours later, the aforementioned is blended with spice. Legends, wafers, and uh, peevishness. Tomatoes? Bake. Ostentatious. Snacks. Let's jump to where they were discovered. Following Van Ori. Run through all of the bolts. I didn't know there was a hold on. What? You know, I just saw a bunch of metal. It's like I, right there. I've been in this fort now for years, and I didn't realize there was any surface metal. Well, <laughs> no, I do, I suppose. And said, I ain't dealing with this. That's kind of the gist I've gotten from them a lot, actually. Right. 
main squad can leave. I think this is going to be... Okay, how many dragons are we at? Oops, wrong screen. I'm at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we'll get two to four more. Oh, the elves are still speaking with me. Well, that's nice. I thought I would have, like, 47 trees. Well, at least they keep letting me trade them. At least they haven't attacked me yet. I keep on expecting them to just invade me, but they haven't yet, which is, like, oddly nice of them. Uh, did I tell you to fill from the right stuff? Seven? Well, it should be. There we go. So hopefully this will start dealing with the massive, 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 massive amounts of extra random crap I have lying around. Uh, because this is a calm biome and I literally haven't chopped down a tree in like five years. They add us like some trees every year if you don't chop down trees. I literally haven't cut down a tree in this fort in a very long time. Robes and spears. Um, let's do iron spears. Although we are still making robes. I think. Yeah, we are. We literally are making robes, so I can just... What we're doing on cloth. Probably running pretty low, actually. Yeah, we're getting there. I would actually like to trade so I could buy more cloth, but... Yeah, I know very little about how forum hosting works. Speaking of trading, hey, what? That's a... Not my fault. That's you deciding to bring your caverns in at a really weird angle. Not my fault, silly humans. There's also some terrified chinchillas down here for some reason. Well, I'm sure they'll still be able to carry much of my used laundry out of here, so that's great. Poor chinchillas. It is what it is. I keep getting welcome to the chat room. I'm a little bit worried about Twitch's stability today. At least we have the backup, which is good. Can't sell any of the robes. That makes sense. Uh, we'll sell this crown. It was glitchy for you early, earlier? Yeah. I wonder if there's a stream with like 10 million concurrent viewers or some shit. Let's go take a look. No, it doesn't seem anything to be particularly out of the norm. Yeah, I mean, there's like, like a Valorant tournament happening. Okay, I, well, I mean, there's a Valorant tournament happening, but it's nothing crazy. It's like 50,000 concurrent. So I, I don't know. Who knows? Video players stopped working earlier, so you watched my video? Oh, really? Oh, there you go. Is it as controversial as the comments think it is? Sell all of those copper gauntlets. <laughs> Do not read comments. Did you think it was controversial? I mean, you're smarter than me, then. <laughs> you heard Valorant? Eh. Not really. There is a Valorant thing happening right now. So Valorant has more views than usual. I'm trying to figure out why Twitch is being a little twitchy today. Which usually means there's a large esports tournament happening, but it doesn't seem to be anything crazy. Uh, let's sell that to place those nest boxes. All right, well, 
that's enough stuff there. We can make dragon egg omelets in a moment. I'm pretty sure it says Pacific in the title of the stream now, does it not? Oh, no, I didn't. Shit. Okay, that's my bad. I will update that. Also, I've been told that Zach will also be here. Both lead devs. I mean, I would say it's both halves of Bay 12, because Putnam is technically a contractor for Kit Fox, not Bay 12, not, not Bay 12 at all. Um, the human diplomat meets with us. They say, it's a pleasant place you've carved out here for yourselves. We would say that, wouldn't they? Typical human flattery. I mean, I don't understand UTC <laughs> at a glance without just looking it up in my time zones, so I. I mean, I, I was trying to organize a, a, an unrelated thing last night with a developer, and we were talking about whether or not we should do things on Monday or Sunday. And then anyway, it goes, wait, my Monday or your Monday? I'm like, well, you're a day ahead of me, I think, so your Monday is the one I'm talking about, which is my Sunday. It's like, yeah. Oh, shit. Huh? What? Or, or, okay, what? This dwarf was part of this squad, but just came back as a migrant? I'm very confused. That's confusing. Um, well, I suppose you can go join this squad. <laughs> That's, that is odd. Um. here previously. Incredibly brave in the face of looming danger. Hey, welcome to the military. <laughs> Consider yourself recruited then. Awful. Infected? Uh, I don't think he, like having a, being a were creature wouldn't affect that. At least not in any way that I would know. Also brave. Excellent. Were you the one that I... Did I just... Oh, I just got two dwarves with the same... <laughs> with the same name. I was like, excellent. Aleth is like one of my previous military dwarves. I'll put you in the military. Just another dwarf named Aleth shows up. Excellent. Aleth is a good... Wait, what? Goal's a little less accurate these days. The goal has shifted since the initial embark. We are now very much combat focused. <laughs> Weird how that happens. Now he's peace over war. Really now? That was quickly good memory. Hmm. Um, you don't seem like the best fit for military. You, on the other hand, might be. Bad with words, not dutiful and fearless. Excellent, welcome. Get in there, Dorf. We do in fact have dragons, yes. And um, elephants and grizzly bears. Which I'm not currently using for war because I'm trying to steal livestock. You just like not left the map yet, is that what's going on? Dwarf's very slow at getting permissions. 
Actually, all of my dwarves are very slow. Oh, that's because you have a crutch. Ability to stand lost. Ah, well, you can leave the military. That's fine. Oh, let's go back this way. Keep watching these dwarves as they come in. Mastering skill, respects power. Avoids excitement, that's fine. I care more that they enjoy the process of learning and deal with it when they're through it. This is a novice crafts dwarf who's married to Aiton, who just got thrown into the military. Um, you can join the other squad, novice Saigon. <laughs> dragon eggs, sunny side up. We haven't had dragons for that long. It's the last couple of years. The last four, well, I did another fortress in this world that had like significantly larger numbers of dragons. But hello. Also chat room, can I get a round of beers? There are so many people are listening to the stream. Twitch is being a little twitchy today, so. It's not quite the, just gotta make sure the stream is still running yet, but we're <laughs> getting close on this I know YouTube's fine. Let's go here and then go dragon. Not many that need to be tamed. That's good. Or trained, rather. Bot is slow today. That might also be Twitch's API being slow. Not necessarily my bot. a whole lot to trade in. The other diplomacy with a Napalm Sideburns meets with the Necromancer, High Treasurer of the Humans, and they ask, what do you want? And I say, wood, please. Wood, please. Please give me wood. No one shields and bucklers. Okay, well, I'll probably give you shields, actually. I'll probably give you shields this time. Our maze of the summer bin probably has stuff in it that I can't sell. Beg your pardon? Can't sell helms. Uh oh. Hmm. I don't think I brought any helms. I'll have to check. Still an adequate broker? Yeah, you haven't been fired yet. At the speed of your legs after 17 flights of stairs? No kidding. <laughs> Remember how I said I needed to sneeze at the very beginning of the sne at the very beginning of the stream? Well, we finally made it. Yeah, I'm at a truck. That's how you know it's a good fort, is when progress is being made. Good lordy. There really is a lot of stuff being sold. Only took three hours? Yeah, almost three hours, yeah. Thank you, Nord. The zombie goblin and the zombie baby are both still around. I'm waiting for the goblins to snatch the zombie baby. Which is just something I would really love to see happen. Uh, it is almost noon. It's 10 to noon, and it's at 2, so 2 hours. Um, I need to go check my blood sugar, because I was kind of high this morning, so I gave myself a correction. I need to confirm that I'm not going to die in the next 20 minutes. Be right back.
All right, I've returned. We're okay, not dying. Dev talk in two hours, yes. Chat always turns into a countdown whenever, you know, these events happen. Time zones are very hard, I agree. Kid? Just any kid? Would you like a happy or a sad kid and a boy or a girl kid? Also, the kids are decently happy, actually. Did we get a countdown on screen. No? No. Because then I'd have to make one. And you are... Vastly overestimating the amount of effort that I'm willing to put into things, especially when I have a head cold. <laughs> you asked this uh, before, but you might have missed it. The emo kid that made the coffin still alive. Uh, I need to check the name of the coffin. But none of the kids have died to my knowledge. Uh, Irish, yes, still alive. The Dwarven Child. This one? I think you did ask before, but I was, like, responding to a bunch of different things simultaneously, so. That one. All right. Okay. Nord. Okay, Nord. <clears throat> Uh, the creator of Arush, uh, is hauling a copyright gauntlet. Turns out, hi, new here. I'm blind. Just want to say that you love my content. Thank you. Appreciate you. Is pleasantly moved by art and natural beauty and lacks confidence in her abilities. Uh, she is not driven and rarely feels the need to pursue even a modest success. Tends to be a little stubborn when work and changing her mind about things and, uh, is slow to trust others. Uh, takes off her helping gifts without feeling particularly grateful and, uh, thinks she is fairly important to the grand scheme of things. Likes a little excitement now and again and is conflicted by this she beca because she considers tranquility preferable to too much conceptually. Uh, is quite comfortable with others that have a different appearance or culture and, uh, thinks and she likes to take it easy she often feels lustful and she tends to form all the tenuous emotional bonds with others has a greedy streak and her voice trays off when she's trying to remember something she needs alcohol to get through the working day and need, needs alcohol to get she needs alcohol to get through the working day and needs alcohol to get through the working day i don't know why i'm stuck in the sentence uh doesn't really care about anything anymore dreams of crafting a masterwork and, so, and someday this dream was realized and personally views tranquility and values tranquility and quiet greatly respects those that observe decorum and maintain their dignity and does not care about family one way or another. Likes jet black bronze and light yellow diamond. I gotta say, you got good taste. You like jet. Rope reed fabric and the color pumpkin. Shields and ballista parts and chickens for their clucking and the words of the fragrant sheen glimmer and the sound of the rhyming verse and the sight of the meandering play and when possible prefers to consume hyena, char, and lychee wine. Absolutely hates hamsters. She is corpulent, and she has a very broad nose. Her mom is Elfie Bean, her dad is Raging Cave, and she's an older sister named Inif. Uh, she's a member of the Silvery Dominion, and uh, blissful after sleeping in a great bedroom. What fort is this? This is the fort of Subtle Scribe. It's a subtle hint to Subtle, subtle Scribe. It's, it's the, the, that's what this is. How can you hate hamsters? I, I got bit by a hamster once, true story. I've never been bit by anybody's pet rat, but I've been bit by a pet hamster, and I've been bit by a pet hedgehog. I also got spiked by uh, a hedgehog. That hedgehog was funny. It was really, 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 really nice to my friend's sister. Anybody else would go near it, you'd either get bit or spiked. One of the two. Hated everybody else. It only liked the person that gave it food. And she would always be like, you want to see my hedgehog? And she'd show you the hedgehog, and you'd be like, no, oh, it's a cute hedgehog. And you'd go to poke the hedgehog, and it'd be like, stab! Or it would just latch onto your finger, and you'd be like, ow! Very unpleasant little creature. I much prefer when, like, tree frogs try to bite, bite you because at the very least it's really funny. It's like, well, you have no teeth, so, like, what are you even going to do? Like, oh no, it's so threatening. Kind of feeling. Hello, UGDPY, how are you? Really? Rod rodents are small animals. Small animals tend to be shockingly violent. 
um, because they are squishable easily uh, and thus must defend their uh, existence with their teeth, I would say. So I did ask them to bring instruments. Um, so I'm just going to grab one of every, maybe a couple of some of them. We're going to start putting instruments around the place. Barrels. I do need the cloth bins. I don't buy those. Perm. Uh, let's see. I could use some plant fruits. Kind of low on that. On variety, anyway. And also these fish. Then aside from that, scroll. And codex. There we go. And trade. I might trade again if I have the chance, otherwise. Eh. We do see a dragon. We do, in fact, have dragons. Oh, hey, my squad came back. Yay. Uh, we stole more livestock. And let how it made. Hey, that's a good haul. Four more dragons. All right. So I'm going gonna... I'm going to start training the war dragons and we are going to assign them to my main squad this is the geared papers this is my main squad okay let's jump down to the bottom people in the geared papers position four are going to be moved over which means they're going to have to go get better gear basically better just move better soldiers over yeah, let's move some of the Foggy Pick squad over as well. So this squad is going to become my invasion squad. Uh, but before they can become my invasion squad, truly, they need to get new gear. And I need to move my elephants around. So I'm going to go up to here. I'm going to go to this. Search at the bottom. Just type in war and just see how many war elephants are in here. None. Okay. How about this one? How many war elephants are in here? Three. Okay, so let's assign the rest of the war elephants to this. Then I'm going to go down here. I'm going to make a pen pasture. Sure, it doesn't matter if it crosses over with that. I'm going to go back up to this spot right here. I'm going to go calf. Unassign every single baby elephant that is in this pasture. And we're going to put them down here. So all the baby elephants that do not currently have a pasture. So now the war elephants are stuck in their own pasture, separated from everywhere else. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Pets and Livestock. I'm going to type in Elephant, minus the one stray one. Uh, and I'm going to type in Van Ori, my militia commander. Squad is Iralium. Okay, Iral two. Bro, used to be rich. Congratulations! Means a lot, man. Thank you very much for keeping that subscription alive for such a long period of time. All right. So now they have a bunch of these. And we are going to go do something kind of ballsy go start destroying towers. All right. That's a good number. And I made an ad. So I will pause. Are hedgehogs specifically popular pets in Canada? 
I knew one person growing up that had a pet hedgehog. That same person also had a pet hamster. <laughs> Except it was the brother that had the hamster and the sister that had the hedgehog. So, I have absolutely no idea. Maybe? I don't know. Do you think they are illegal in your state? Is this one of those situations where they get, like, released into the wild when people get tired of having them as pets and then they're, like, invasive? Is, is it one of those situations? Wow, YouTube algorithm's actually working. Reviews on this stupid video are going up. <laughs> huh. Good news is I've gained two subscribers from... Oh, three subscribers, actually, from that video. Bad news is we're still down 23. <laughs> also, apparently, it's making my other videos get more views. Oh, well, that's cool. Rising bullshit freezes all ships, apparently. Without a permit in California? Huh. Well, I mean, it's, Ill it's illegal to keep a snake in an apartment in my province. So, I don't know. Pet laws are a very regional thing. Manchuk, thanks very much for checking out a subscription. Also, I, when I'm talking about down subscribers, I'm talking about, like, YouTube subs, not Twitch subs. Although Twitch subs are down, too, but that's because a month ago, people threw a lot of gifts around. Okay, so I've got this squad running around and getting gear. So I'm going to give them a little bit of time to get done. I've got dwarves like, uh oh. Um, apparently, one of my dwarves is stumbling around obliviously. Sorry, Ben. Well, I, I don't know how that happened. Like, you seem, like, weren't you a really recent migrant? Nope. You've been okay. Different Ben. Well then, uh, that's unfortunate. I'm <laughs> sorry for your loss. Uh, G4 OG best boy. Thank you very much for that brand new tier one subscription. Thanks for coming around the stream two days in a row. Welcome back. Dude. a lot of storing items in bins for a little bit. All right. What do you think, chat? What do I go attack? I think we hit this goblin helix. I don't use a continuous glucose monitor because I'm skinny enough that it's like having a nail in your arm. Oh, lose, not you. Um, what do you mean? What? What? I don't understand. Have it fall off? I don't know. I, I can see that happening in a wash bin pretty easily. They, they don't, they're not that stuck to you. But yeah, I don't use one. I used one for about a week and a half and then threw it out. Let's go hit this helix. We're going to go pillage it. We're not going to loot other items or release prisoners. But we'll free our captives if there are any. Eh, if I can actually release other prisoners if there are any. Go get them, dwarves. Go get them. go back to this area right here and remove every single named dragon from here. Also need to remove the war elephants from down there. How'd I get them dragons? I stole them from the goblins. Is how I got them. This is 
is one of the busiest fortresses, like, jobs-wise, I've had in ages. Like, literally everybody is hauling something. Because there are so, there's so much clothing being put away right now. And also an absurd amount of armor being put away. Also, apparently I need cloaks pretty bad. Can I even make cloaks? Yes, I can. Let's do... 30 cloth cloaks? Let's do 40 cloth cloaks. I'm seeing dwarves that have cloaks. There's <laughs> just two naked dwarves running around. Let's just make sure that you can actually equip your stuff. You're just going to go equip your stuff. I don't think cops are in charge of handing out pet-related fines. I'm pretty sure that's a different jurisdiction. I could be mistaken, bravely. But I'm pretty sure, it, like, if you have an animal that you're not supposed to have, it's, it's wildlife. It's fish and wildlife, right? Like, the police maybe would get involved if you refuse to give it up, but it's just more of a fine and then... True, I, actually, yeah. I, but I'd be kind of surprised if, like... You know, a SWAT team showed up at your house because you had a pet hamster. <laughs> yeah, it's it's more. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. I'm not like I'm not not really an expert in that, but I would be surprised if that was something they would waste the police's time on. They're good enough at wasting their time on other things anyway. They don't they don't need any more help. You know, YouTube chat says hedgehogs are illegal in Antarctica. You know, Antarctica is a pretty w heavily protected place, right? I'd be willing to bet that might actually be true. <laughs> like, not a lot of money, but I would bet a single unit of money uh, of low value that there is a chance that you are not allowed to bring a hedgehog to Antarctica if for some reason you're going to Antarctica. That wouldn't surprise me too much. I would say that would make a degree of sense. Why are they illegal at all? Because invasive species are a thing. It's like there's plenty of geckos and stuff that you're not allowed to take to um, Hawaii for as an example, or snakes. There's plenty of snakes you're not allowed to, to have in Hawaii because if you release them, they'll just eat everything that lives there. Oh. A faded zombie is fighting with a were-weasel. I'm also just realizing I've never seen a were-weasel. That is a- look at this funky long boy. Look at this long boy. The dwarf faded zombie holds up a hand and it slams into an ox obstacle. Shouts to the faded zombie who's just hanging out on the surface, just like throwing this thing backwards. Um, it's going for a chinchilla. Okay, the, 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 the zombie. I don't know if zombies that get bit can become were-weasels, but were-weasel is just getting flung around by the zombie. Um, the zombie is uh, dead. I think it killed the zombie. Yes, it did, in fact, kill the zombie. It's now just standing here. Awkward. Uh, Bring out running dead. towards the front door of my fort, and uh, Yushirir, who's going off to pillage, um, is turning around to help. We also have uh, traveling transversely, um, who says, can it all end so quickly? Be gone, fair. Uh, got bit almost immediately. So you've been bit. Noted. Bit. Have you been bit? No. Okay, so we will follow your combat log now. Our camel misses. The swords dwarf is doing quite a bit of damage. The bear camel throws the bit by the emperor front teeth. So Gra is throwing the dwarf by his hand. Uh, transversely goes flying through the air. Probably uh, the were weasel sla or the the swords dwarf slashes the were weasel with his long iron long sword, uh, shattering the false ribs and tearing the apart the lung. Uh, bit slams into the were camel uh, into were weasel not were camel. Uh, and then were weasel uh, slams into bit. Um, the swords dwarf misses bit. Where Weasel slams into an obstacle. Where Weasel kicks the dwarf. Ooh, bruising the lung. Bites them again. Ugh. Swords Dwarf slashes the Were Camel again. At least the Swords Dwarf is get, doing a good job here. I don't 
bad are you, how badly are you bleeding? You're bleeding pretty badly. You're also bleeding really badly. Um, continues. I've been injured badly, says the weirweasel. I feel hopeless. Um, the weirweasel uh, locks the, the dwarf's uh, wrist with the weirweasel's upper arm. The weirweasel releases the joint lock and then uh, grabs the dwarf by the lower arm with his upper arm and uh, scratches the dwarf in the neck, tearing the robe, and the robe is shredded. Uh, the the weirweasel says, I've improved my wrestling. That was sat satisfying. The swords dwarf lashes the, the weirweasel with her iron longsword, and the severed part sails off in the arc. So they've lost a hand. It's a pretty good cut you got there, dwarf. Pretty good cut, you shrier. What's behind you? Uh, nothing much. Uh, you're continuing to do the slashing thing. Combat continues to go by. Bites him again. The dwarf is just vomiting a bunch. And the weirweasel is dead. But uh, traveling transversely died. Um... Yeah, I mean, if you're, like, in Antarctica... I was reading about jobs in Antarctica once, and it was like, you are 19 hours away from the nearest hospital. <laughs> and that's if you currently have phone signal. And it's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a dangerous place to live. You basically have to be in pristine health. I think... We should expel this dwarf. Disillusioned after being expelled. Nauseous and vomiting. Sorry, dwarf. It's either that or permanent imprisonment. Oh, Shout out to the good doctor who doesn't give no fucks. Shout out to the good doctor. I like how Cole's in prison. This is like the most cri crime related dwarf in the entire fort. Um. So, Cole here has committed more crimes in this fort than literally anybody else. What if I put a door here and lock it? What do you think, Jack? Eh? Thumbs up? Lock the door? Lock the door. Yeah. It, it checks out. Yeah, sure. Come down. And then uh, this dwarf will be done healing by the time this is finished. And uh, then we can let traveling transversely leave. The question is, will... Will these doors actually get... Yeah, they will. Okay, sweet. <laughs> or will the doors actually get constructed fast enough? What key? Never even saw the key. We we have a perfectly good volcano to put it in. In before this dwarf does what this dwarf just did and leave their shoes in the door doorway. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, nothing above that. Nothing below that. I will let this dwarf live their best life once this dwarf is dead. That's how they earn their best life. Okay. Um. Where is you? And how about you? Some pretty weak dwarves in the squad. Oh. 
you know, <laughs> it's kind of funny how many military dwarves I have that have completely lost their ability to stand. <laughs> it's also kind of sad, but it's really funny to me. It's like, why are you so, oh, you can't walk. Right, we've had lots of injuries in this fort. <laughs> Permanently paralyzed. I really wish that they had like, I don't know, crutch icons or something. <laughs> This was supposed to be a peaceful fort, but then, you know, we, we got a we got a noble who dreamed of ruling the world, right? I, I mean, I haven't even attacked the towers yet. There you go. Go pillage recluse works. You can do it, dwarf. Just simply leave the map. Peace? Yes, we are still fighting for peace. Thanks for asking. Let's make billin bars. Let's also make brass. I don't know how many bars we have to make those, but let's also start making bronze. Also, chat room, thanks for all the follows, by the way. Greatly appreciated. And thanks for all of the subscriptions and the gifts and the bits. The new subs, the old subs, everything. Thanks for hanging out in chat. Also, every single time I look at this video, it's got like 50 more comments and it's kind of terrifying. Is the stream ending? No, I was just saying thanks. Am I allowed to just like say thanks uh, apropos of nothing? Still got a whole interview to do in an hour and 40 minutes? Yeah, Matt, an hour and 40 minutes. Uh, will that noble fulfill their desire to become a monarch if they become the mon I don't know. Um, I have actually, I have no idea how to fill dreams of ruling the world dream. I don't know if it's become monarch. Is it worried you just caught the end? No. No, you'd know it's the end because there'd be um, a record player on the stream playing banger tunes and there'd be a weird rapping voice. Will the interview be recorded? Yep. And it's going to go in the same playlist as the rest of them. If you can succeed in ruling the world. You know what? Let's go to the wiki and find out. No, that's not how to get to the wiki. Dwarf Fortress Wiki. Dreams of ruling the world. Let's see if I can find this. Personality trait. Oh, that's interesting. So looking at the wiki. Um, let's pause the game for a sec. So um, start a family. Need They, they need to have a spouse and... Um, have a child, basically. Rule the world. Blank. <laughs> Bring peace to the world. Blank. Become a legendary warrior. Warrior. They just need to um, train. Fall is falling in love is incompletable. I've seen that one get completed. It's weird that it doesn't have a thing here. Now this is another one I don't know if you can complete. Seeing the great natural place of the world. Immortality. I've never seen someone who dreams of immortality, in a for in fort mode. I've seen make great discovery, rank in society, which is pretty easy. I've, I've achieved that one a couple times. Bathe the world in chaos. That's I've seen that one too. Uh, stay alive is one I've never seen. Maintain entity status is also not one I've seen. I've seen the rest of these though. Looks like the wiki is incomplete. Ah, uh, yeah. No, it is. Okay, Fob, where are you? Getting pants currently? Oh, you did. Sweet. <laughs> Darn question. Is it possible to achieve dreams of ruling the world? I mean, maybe. Yeah, maybe. You know, this kind of reminds me of a fort that I built once 
where I was using minecart shotguns, but the minecart shotguns were literally loaded with armor and weapons. So it's just like, regardless of what the baddies dropped, that's what went into my shotguns, because it was the fastest way to get rid of all the crap in front of the shotguns, <laughs> was just simply to do that. Which I found very funny at the time. Okay, so we were in late summer. I would like to do a thing, which I think would be a really neat construction, but I'm really scared to start doing it, because if I start doing it, it could theoretically cause the collapse of the fort. So I'm going to do this in a way that I'm not envisioning that would be a lot safer, because if we get attacked, that would be really bad. So what I'm doing is I'm basically carving out these two tombs. This tomb and this tomb. I was initially going to also carve out the walls simultaneously and then reconstruct the walls, but I think I'll do that later. And my idea is just to drop down a few layers all the way around the tombs and lower them down so that it gives us kind of a suspended in space effect all the way around the fort is what I would like. We'll see when we see you. And if you make it back, you make it back. If you don't, you don't. Don't forget the VOD will go up on the YouTube channel tomorrow morning. <laughs> Minecart shotguns filled with doodads that are full of... The, the, the problem with that idea, Jack... Jack... Uh, Manny? Manny? Uh, or Jack, just in general. The problem with that is most doodads are very, very ineffective. Like, that was the issue that I ran into with that idea, actually. Um, is that they are just not good weapons, basically. Like, generally, when you send something out to attack something, you, you want it to do damage, right? I'm just making sure that all of the owned... Dragons... And elephants have left. Okay, sweet. Everything has left the map. The siege is underway. Ballistas are dangerous. They're not bad. Ballistas can be very, very, very effective. The problem is, is ballistas also friendly fire. So I find them a little unwieldy. Um, for that reason. Okay, actually, I need to... Do that. I find them a bit unwieldy. But they are certainly quite effective. How many miners do I have currently? Not very many. Ballista's friendly fire, yes. There, uh, when I was sieging hell in a recent fort, um, I had two ballistas lined up, and then two rows of Markswerves on either side, and I actually had a ballista go to the side and kill an entire squad of Markswerves. <laughs> uh, which was, you know, a little bit distressing. Uh, you can, in fact, fill minecarts with minecarts. It's just not a, like an infinite repeating cycle. It's it's not like a bag of holding with minecarts. Sounds like a mild annoyance. It was, in fact, a mild annoyance. I was really angry. <laughs> this is the short version. No, that's not. This is the tool I wanted. This means I need to do that. So, because of all of the quantum stockpiles I have, this is how many haul jobs I have currently for that one stockpile. All of those. Which is kind of crazy, actually. I also really need some more farmers. More planters, actually.
It's very pleasing. Thanks, Apostic. You enjoy ballistas a lot, though. Ballistas can be a lot of fun. Like, they, they can be. I just personally find them a bit unwieldy. Um, and I'm not very good at setting them up, apparently. Is <laughs> something that I've learned. Oh, a magma crab is fighting. Where, where's the magma crab at? Did it catch a child on fire? Magma crab running around? Not that I'm seeing. Oh, there it is. There's an angry crab! Angry crab. I'm just going to uh, tell this squad to go kick it. Uh, maybe not the best idea as it's now in the volcano. Uh, instead, I will just go station the squad here for a moment and see if I can do that. We're also going to start placing green glass floors around the edge just to stop them from coming out entirely. Oh, good lord. <laughs> Probably was just reloading, actually. Oh, no. Quit, quit firing globs of my dwarfs. There we go. Bamboo got him. Good shot, Bamboo. Yeah, anybody? No, sweet. Whew. That was scary. I was worried for a moment, sort of. It's funny, we like had no problems with them and now suddenly there's they're they're popping up. Typical. Uh yeah, they can crawl up and come out of forges if you give them a path into the forge. You have to give them a path into the forge though, which makes them not makes it not not a super common occurrence. Not a super common occurrence, but it can happen. I um, usually set up my forges so that they can't get into my forges, or try to send up my forges so that they can't get in. Basically, like, not leaving open space in my forges. Which I find to be the most efficient method of avoiding that issue. We're also going to need to queue up more green glass blocks, because we're running out! But... I find that, like, the way people use ballistas the most effectively is just long, flat hallways. Just be careful that, um, because they can go back through your own fortifications, which is usually how friendly fire happens, or when you leave them running. I think that, uh, siege gear, um, I really wish it was, like, a squad type or something, or, like, they worked, like, workshops where I could assign specific dwarves to them, because... Siege engineers are a weird task because I, I guess you could make a custom role for them because usually what I want siege engineers to be is I want them to be military that have tr spent a lot of time training, but are um, no longer. Actually, hold on. There's something else I need to check. Uh, I, I, I want them. To, I often want them to be military that have spent a lot, lot of time training, but are no longer um, actively in the military, so that they have the really nice, good, high bravery stats. Because an issue that often crops up is they will, um, no, not the one that's changed, is they will be totally fine and very useful, and then what happens is... <laughs> After being totally fine and very useful, um, enemy gets too close, they run away screaming. Although, now we're in an ad. Would archer range with a ballista in it function as training? I mean, right now, the best way to train them is just simply with... Um, Right now, the best way to train them is just simply with uh, catapults, because cata like it's it's a static thing. They're all it's all the same form of training, so you'd use catapults. In my opinion, also the other thing I want to do is I want to start gelding. The bears that are getting military trained. Am 
Masterwork catapult and stone storage work one mir work miracles for training siege engineers. Yes. Yeah. The the is there a way to stop them from like do, does the trench technique stop them from destroying the boulders too? But yeah, basically what I always want to do is like you know these dwarves that I have that can't walk because they got injured in the military. Those are the dwarves I would want to use as siege engineers. But it's kind of a difficult because you can't really because it's there's no way to specify who specifically is going to be the one that operates the siege engine at any given time. So unless I like I literally make a custom roll and only allow them to do it, and then they will also take way longer to load it. <laughs> it's it's kind of a tricky situation, I guess. I, I wish that there was. I wish the training was more straightforward. I wish the the abilities that they had was more straightforward, and I wish that they could aim up and down. Like if they could aim the way Mark's dwarves work, I would use them all the time. And reloading is already a very slow process, right? And injured dwarves already move really slowly. So you basically need to train up a military squad specifically for the express purpose of, you know, being brave enough to not run away and also reloading. So. What rough gems do I have? Only 22. I feel like that number should be higher. Let's cut this out as well. What do you guys think of my tombs experiment? Kind of neat. Works for me. Almost looks like a weird, like, squirt gun. <laughs> but I think this lower area is going to be cut out almost entirely. Cut it down to just two pillars. Hello, how are you doing? Very nice. You're not gonna say what you think it looks like? It absolutely looks like a dick, don't worry. <laughs> I'll say it so you don't have to. But I'm gonna eventually, if I have to, put more tombs over here. Very stubby dick. Set of lungs? I mean, sure. What, I'll say it so you don't have to? I mean, the reality is my sex tape wouldn't be called that because it would be called untitled because it doesn't exist. Exhausted as fuck. Yeah, I feel ya. I haven't slept well in a good number of days. It's been a, been a it's been a weird week for me, sleep wise. I normally sleep better than this generally, but we are. What's the best way to get eat food for eating and, f and brewing? The reason I say farming is not that important, is because you can if you are in any biome with any kind of vegetation growing outside, any time of year at almost any time, you can just click this button and then click and drag over the entire area and do that and you will get all of the materials you need for cloth, brewing, and farming. So on almost any temperate biome, you can do that. That's why I say it's not that important. It's not as important as people make it seem, I guess, is the actual answer. It is still important. It's just not as important as you might expect. Or um, four like talented fisher dwarves can feed an entire fort if there's a good amount of fish in the area. It is the most consistent food source in the game, farming. It's just not the only one, and it's not as important as some people make it out to be. I'm just gonna delete, just not remove those for right now. Oh, sweet, dwarves are back. What? Oh, wrong button. So we went and pillaged a local dwarven hillix. The Veiled Halls attacked the strapping doom at the angry demon. At Recluse Works, Van Ori 
led the attack. And the defender, the, 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 oh, by the way, Van Ori's title is fantastic. Van Ori's full title is Van Ori, the walled shields of, shields of death. One of the best names in the game. Um, and, uh, led the attack and the defenders were led by the goblin. Iliffy? Homage sockets. That's an elf name. Fascinating world this is. Uh, in the late summer of 537, Van Ori, distinct labors, uh, the walled shields of death, outmatched the goblin with a cunning plan, and the attackers had a strong positional advantage. Also, welcome back, Elfie. This is also arty. Artsy. I'd rather my sex tape to be artsy than just like, you know, a grainy piece of shit. Uh, anyway, goblin, uh, the goblin uh, attacked a dwarf, and I'm sure that ended great for the goblin. It did. The goblin died. Um, and let's see. More goblins are struck down by my dwarves. Okay. Uh, we searched the place and looted shit. So there wasn't that much there. There was like two goblins there. Um, I have a question, chat. Do we raise this location? Useful Elves, a book we, we looted. Do I raise that location? Or do we let it sit? I think we, I think we let it sit, potentially. Recluse works. Um, I have a question. Is that dwarf dead in my hospital? Well, this isn't going the way I wanted it to. Have I really not had a full moon yet? Nope, we did. I was expelled. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Huh. Hmm. I'm going to release the swear creature and say, get, get out. Just, just get out. Just, just go leave. Just go leave, please. Leave the fort. I'm waiting for Van Ori to get back. We're going to go attack a different location, and I'm going to make that other dwarf once they're, you know, done being so injured. <laughs> and send them out to go take over that location. So I'm going to make a new squad with no uniform. My commander is going to be Cole, the dwarf. You're going to have a mission. Your mission is going to be Go here, conquer and occupy, you do it. While this dwarf leaves the map. Uh, what kind of dwarf would you like, Anchuk? Mm -hmm. Okay, sweet. He'll probably come back and attack us soon. It'll be fun. And uh, the other main squad... That seems fun. Let's go pillage them. Oldest child. I assume that isn't named. Um, the oldest not named child is Cogsack. This one. Would you like to be this child? Okay. Real man, Chuck. Doesn't feel anything after seeing a goblin's dead body. Is always in love with somebody and is e easily develops positive feelings. Is troubled by this as she holds romance in low regard. Uh, she is, uh, 
She likes to keep things practical without delving too deeply into the abstract, and she has an active sense of humor, often feels discouraged, and has a calm demeanor, occasionally overindulges and isn't particularly curious about the world, speaks in monotone when she's annoyed, and she laughs very loudly whenever she's surprised, commonly winks as a form of greeting and needs alcohol to get through the working day, dreams of mastering a skill, and personally views decorum as a high ideal indeed, deeply offended by those to f who fail to maintain it, finds sacrifice to be the height of folly, and respects individuals that persevere through their trials and labors, values a harmonious existence, and finds blind honesty foolish. Uh, values, uh, probably wants power over others or hates those who um, wield power over others. Uh, f finds romance distasteful and doesn't particularly care about craftsmanship. There we go. Caught up. K-O-G-S-A-C-K. People are always like, what name was that? Have you played this game before? It's a very common dwarven name. Also, Razor Church is a phenomenal last name in the name of my new punk band, by the way. I should name a fortress Razor Church. That is great. <laughs> like, holy hell. Look at that. I don't know. I don't think there's any specific commonality between other names. I'm pretty sure they're all evenly common. I think Eurist is just the most memorable. Same with Bosa. I see a lot of, na like, Nod humans. Like, N-O-D. Humans have a lot of very short names. Uh, you can just go to the wiki and look at the full list and control F to figure it out pretty quick. Stone uh, in chat is one of the fastest to figure those out for us. Uh, apparently you hate mosquitoes. We have that in common. Uh, like serpent, uh, serpentine, lay pewter, blue diamond, giant pond turtle shell, giant cave spider silk, mittens, bins, and catapult parts, and uh, toads for their beauty. Would you look at that? Uh, you like the sound of the pristine loot, and when possible, prefers to consume buckwheat beer and purple amaranth flour, and absolutely you hate mosquitoes. More than anything, you hate mosquitoes. Um, you've, you know some poems. You've never read a book. You're an adequate speaker, but you're, ba you, you're, you're rusty. Welcome to the fort. There you go. Stone, stone, Stone's got the list for you. For some reason, I thought you went to bed. Maybe I'm thinking about yesterday. My brain's all over the place this week. Uh, let's get some more green glass. Never mind. Don't need to. Still making it. Can't do. Trying to get like this circle done, you know? Squad's almost entirely left. Cole, the militia captain is throwing a tantrum. God damn it, Cole. At least you're leaving the map. So this dwarf is actively throwing a tantrum while leaving the map to go take over a local goblin run helix. <laughs> Good luck, bud. Do you think he's gonna do it? Also, the rough caves is funny. Hey! <laughs> he did it. <laughs> she did it. Congratulations, Cole. May you live the rest of your life running that local helix. <laughs> I mean, we killed the goblin, like, insurgents, so the people living there were just friendly dwarves um, and neutral entities, so it's ours now. That's actually why you can't um, destroy a lot of factions, because if there's neutral entities to your faction there, your dwarves can't kill them. So they go there, they're just like, oh, these people are all neutral. This is against my ethics. So instead of killing them, they just kind of stand there awkwardly going, da, and then they leave instead of actually taking the place over. Which I personally think is hysterical. This dwarf is bringing a hagfish as a snack? Mate, come on, you can do better than that. Oi, that's <laughs> snarly. I'm assuming we still have meals? I haven't looked in a while. Prepared meals, prepared meals. 
And she, she just showed up and was like, I'm in charge here. And, oh, we're at prepared meals. All right, time to make meals. And am I brewing drinks? Yes, we are, in fact, brewing drinks. Not brewing drinks fast enough, though, apparently, because I will make, um, I think, two more stills. Put one here. I think you had a green glass. Put one here. Make you add a green glass. And put one here. Make you add a green glass. Two more stills. One of my favorite funny quirks of this fortress is that the vast majority of the dwarves actually prefer to eat in the prison than in the tavern because it's closer to the food stockpile. <laughs> Which I think is really funny, personally. It's like, there is a big-ass dining hall right here, but they go downstairs to the tavern instead. <laughs> um, let's, uh, let's place more tables in here. Just a few extras. You know where their friends live? Yeah, pretty much. Down in hell with the boys. God, that's funny. <laughs> the tantrum Ming Dwarf just immediately taking over the location. Also, whose birthday is it in? Oh, right, yeah, it's Telenartho's birthday, by the way. I don't know if Telenartho's here, but there's like a wall of happy birthdays going off in Discord <laughs> right now. Right down here. I read that as Elvis the first time you said it. Elvis's, Elvis's longest words is a 16 tie as 16 words of eight letters. Jeez, it's a large number of letters. Like a letter in the Finnish language. Oh, shit, are they back? Okay, so our obviously our siege was fine. The dwarf didn't even need to kill anybody. Literally, that dwarf just showed up and defeated them. And took over the place. The new government was called the Trades of Praising. So this was our first attempt of attacking a rather large location. Uh, this has 750 population. The dwarf Van Ori led the attack, and the defenders were led by the goblin Muplul Erngilt. Uh, the goblin uh, Erngilt outmatched the dwarf Van Ori with a cunning plan, but and the defenders had a strong positional advantage. Ooh. Okay. Well, my cave dragon immediately kills one of them. Um, another cave dragon kills another one. Uh, goblin, uh, was struck down by a cave dragon. Goblin was struck down by a cave dragon. Goblin was struck down by a cave dragon. Um, okay. So then we had another opportunity. Uh, the Lone Glee of Orbs, which is my squad, led by Van Ori, uh, clashed with 39 goblins in uh, soldier standards. The Elephant, Eral, clashed with seven dwarves. The forces shifted. And the attackers had a strong positional advantage. Shoutouts to our elephants and the battle prowess of our cave dragons. The elephant Erush uh, clashed with five dwarves, slaying them. Wow, five kills? Holy shit. Uh, the elephant Erush clashed with 39 goblins, slaying six. Erush clashed with uh, seven dwarves, slaying six. The forces shifted, and the defenders had a strong positional advantage. Man, it's like flip flopping. Elephant Erish uh, clashed with a single dwarf, slaying them. And the Elephant Erish clashed with a uh, 21 goblins, slaying 12. I think we can keep hitting that. I think we can. We're going to pillage again. Not worry about other loot. And as soon as Van Ori gets back, I'm going to send them back out.
Oh, did you give him a unique chicken for his birthday? There's a story about a woman in Hawaii that sued the state because her name is so long it couldn't fit on the license. What? Now I want to know what her name was. Was it one of those, like, she just had, like, 20 first and last names or something? Weird things like that? Or did she just have, like, a very interesting long name? Come back with prestige names? I wonder if I can. Hello, blind. Happy Friday. Friday. Yes, that. Lucas Fox, though, thank you very much for the fifth month. Welcome back. Good day. It's also not Friday. It's Thursday here. But, I mean, it might be Friday for you. Could definitely, very much definitely be Friday for you. Oh. Mad Walker, as well. Thanks for the third month. Chat, hour and seven minutes from now is when Tarn joins me. I will be ending the stream when the interview ends because I have to go to... Um, a, uh, a strata meeting for my building this evening. How many kills do you have? Probably not that many, actually. There you go. You're back. Let's go hit them again. Oh, I don't even need to make a new meeting or a new mission. I can just go here, click that. Get back out. There they go. Caravan has a... What? This, this is your fault for showing up in an extraordinarily inconvenient spot. Not mine. Ah. Oh, no. All right, well, we'll see you tomorrow. Stone for the... Next opportunity. Of course it's BuzzFeed. Of course it's fucking BuzzFeed. Okay, like, I... I can't pronounce that word. But I understand. Because that is a very long last name. I, sure, I, I, I just, I, that's, that's fair. I just think it's funny that you gave me BuzzFeed. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. I, I'd be in the same... I, I don't know if I'd sue the state, but I'd be pissed. Armor stands and weapon racks? Armor stands and weapon racks work, yes. If that's what you're asking. Purple is you mean. Thank you very much for the eighth month. Welcome back. she had to sue. Yeah, I mean, that. <laughs> as somebody who's had to do some graphic design before, I do not envy anybody whose job it is to design and make ident identification papers. Because they are very, very, very too spec. And it's like, if you have like a, I don't know, a 20 character last name or something, it doesn't fit. Like, the number of times I've had trouble getting onto flights my, name, my last name's easy to find, but let's just say it's it's two words, my last name. The number of yeah, times I've had a hard time confirming a now. flight so because be their software doesn't know how to put a space in a last name, and then, like, passports bounce because they... Yeah, it's a similar kind of idea to Van Helsing. <laughs> and then passports bounce because they scan the passport, and they go, that's not right, and then they look at it, and they look at me, and they go, oh... Okay, and like hand it to me. It's like if I ever have to go through a purely automated system, if their software doesn't know how to deal with that, I'm in trouble. <laughs> and it kind of blows. No, actually, I want to get rid of ammunition. Let's go back to ammo. Let's just type in all arrows, everything that's an arrow. Although, actually, let's make sure these aren't forbidden. All right. Um, let's also do all these dog amulets. Why not? Brrr. 
Her name gets uh, truncated on statements. Yeah. Thank you very much for the hype train. Uh, Elfie Bean, thank you very much for the dollar to start the hype train. There is a hype train, so if you happen to have bits on your account or if you have a resub that you've been waiting to use, now's your opportunity to get some emotes that you may or may not want. And also, just as a reminder, all notifications are going to be shut off uh, when the interview starts. So if you want to do text-to-speech or anything, goofball now. Now is the time to do it. Let's just do everything up here. Maybe not the iron stuff, because I'd like to keep that. So many shoes. Thanks for the pennies, Orange. Appreciate you. Drop table? What, like your last name, drop table? This is just reminding me of that person that changed their name, their last name to D's Nuts and then went and committed a bunch of crimes. There was a bunch of, like, headlines flying around that D's Nuts had just committed a crime and it was like, oh boy. <laughs> Some people. Uh, fungi tree grew on the ramp of one of your cavern levels and the dwarves apparently couldn't pass to there to chop it. Really? You'd have to dig around it, I think. Notice this was up. Okay, Nord, thanks. For the fourth month. Welcome back, dude. Yeah, I don't know, um... If anybody here, uh, ever had this happen, but I once was running... This was older... This was version 47, so pre-Steam. I was running a bunch of dwarves around in a cavern to just kind of explore everything. And as they were exploring, a tree finished growing. You may have seen trees finish growing occasionally. They just kind of pop up to full size all of a sudden. And uh, the reason this was bad is I was, you know, just doing my thing, doing my thing, doing my thing. Suddenly a tree pops up to full size. And my entire squad was stuck on the wrong side. And so my frame rate instantly went to zero. <laughs> and it was like 20 minutes of waiting for a dwarf to walk like 80 tiles left <laughs> to just chop down this tree. It's very funny. We just kind of sat there. Eventually, I like tabbed out and did something else. Eventually, he got to it, and then it was fine, but it was just very amusing. Oops. I'm too lazy to melt weapons down. So, um, so let's just let's just go to weapons, spikes, elbrids, two-handed swords. Something that's neat about these weapons is even though there's a lot of weapons that are not wieldable in vanilla in fortress mode, a lot of these weapons are wieldable um, in adventure mode. Also, congratulations. The hype train just snoozed the ad break. <laughs> There's always something that's amusing to me whenever that happens. You know, very slowly, very slowly, the like-to-dislike ratio in that video I uploaded this morning is gearing positive again. <laughs> Which I think is, again, funny. That video's got 9,000 views. Which is ridiculous for a video I upload. <laughs> People are so mad about it. I tried my best, man. <laughs> it's been up for five and a half hours and it's got 9,000 views. Jesus Christ. We figured out earlier today that I haven't had a video get more than like 280 comments since January of 2023. Early January 2023. 
Zod Dwarf, that video has had more like, dislike, slash, comment interaction than any video I've uploaded in the last year. <laughs> Over a year it's been. I've had a video get that much interaction. Which means I either made a grave mistake and I fucked up bad and I should have put out my... I should start recording my apology video right now. Um, or... <laughs> uh, I won? I... I don't know. I think I'm fine. <laughs> Stirred up a lot of hot takes. I mean... I've only, I, I lost 25 YouTube subs off of that. And like, that's not terrible. I will be okay. I get more than that most days, so. Double down. No, I should apologize and then double down and then react to my original video and condemn myself for all of my mistakes and then double down on, and then take everything I say back from the react video saying that I didn't have all the context uh, and then agree with myself and then apologize, right? Oh yeah, and then play and then play a, an out of tune jam on the guitar that's sitting right there. <laughs> that's that's what I that's what I need to do. No, I I won't. It's, I've I've done my thing. I've said what I needed to say. I'm good. What tune? Dum da da lam bam bam bam. I actually I genuinely cannot play guitar for two reasons. One, because the, that guitar's strings are so old. I keep pointing like it's there. It's not actually, oh no, actually it is still there. I thought I put it on the desk, never mind. Uh, it is there, there is a guitar right there. Uh, I can't actually play it because the strings are so old, they're kind of rusted. Um, and also uh, I have diabetic fingers from stabbing my fingers all the time. So I, the last thing I want to do is touch steel strings. Oh yeah, then get mad about being canceled, right? That's what I need to do at that point. This is the most circle jerky I think my Twitch chat's ever been. And that's very funny to me. <laughs> but no, I uh, I made the one video on the topic. I'm, I'm done after that. Dwarves can use Hailbrids. I'm just not using Hailbrids and I'm not going to melt them down. Fun fact, I think dwarves can use Hailbrids to chop down trees. Unless that was actually a bug that got fixed. Which I'm not certain it was. But chat, thanks for the dollar ten pennies and uh, the four dollar or the four subscriptions. Nice little baby train. Appreciate you guys. Uh, that's gonna be the primary topic as yeah, adventure mode. There will always be some off-topic questions, and I guarantee we will get off-topic. But the primary focus of the interview in an hour, Dragoon and YouTube chat, uh, is going to be adventure mode. Now Twitch is notifying me about my breaks, ad breaks. Neat. When this ad break hits chat, I'm going to go grab my sandwich because I should eat. Desorlelum is what they're apparently making. Oh, sweet. Squad's back. Our next pillaging ran out. So Van Ori once again led the attack. The defenders were led by a different goblin. Van Ori uh, outmatched this goblin named Butch Oranges. Orange, we found your Butch alter ego. And uh, the ad break's about to hit. I'm gonna go grab my sandwich. I will be right back. Don't go anywhere too quickly unless you really want to. BRB. Questions not to ask for the interview? Uh, we'll talk about that when I get back. I'm back. It's, I just had to stab myself with a needle and grab a sandwich. 
They're hoping something similar to DFX Adventure Fort uh, will be implemented into the game. Oh, you mean the, the command that lets you just like jump straight into adventure mode? Is that the one you're referring to? I've never actually used that one. It'll be, I, I, actually, I should reach out to the adventure mode guys and see what, or to the um, DFX guys and see what they're adding. Cheese, bread, butter, mustard. Very simple. I was in a rush this morning. I forgot to make a sandwich until about two minutes before I turned my stream on. I was like, shit, I should probably go do that. Generally, if there's stuff on my sandwich that's finely minced, it's usually an onion. Snail, thank you very much for the fourth month. Welcome back. Everybody's popping their recepts today. Okay. You're not as savvy with the essence. It has much more management based than actual control. You're looking forward to adventure mode? That's an interesting way of putting it. All right. <clears throat> The Cunning Clan, the attackers had a strong positional advantage. Although I will say, Adventure Mode is a lot more fun if you do have some forts in the world. So even if you're bad at, at Fortress Mode, make and destroy three or four forts in the world that you're going to play Adventure Mode in. Like, even if they only last for a year or two. Just have a bunch of bodies everywhere, you know? Set up some disasters. Drown a bunch of dwarves. Give yourself something to explore and find later. Um, Outmatch the Goblin with a Cunning Plan and the attack... Uh, oh, what? Wait, what? Uh, the attackers had a strong positional advantage. The elephant Iden clashed with six dwarves, slaying them. The goblin Niglusho um, was right. Okay, they, they're just smashing. They're beating the crap out of the guy in charge, basically. Killed the guy in charge. Um, another goblin was struck down by an elephant. A uh, goblin was struck down by another elephant. The lone orbs, which is my squad, uh, led by Van Ori, clashed with six dwarves, slaying them. Uh, the elephant clashed with... 56 goblins, or sorry, 36, not 55. 35 goblins uh, slaying six. Uh, the elephant uh, clashed with uh, 29 goblins uh, slaying six. The lone glee of orbs, um, led by the dwarf fan Ori, clashed with 23 goblins slaying eight. The elephant Iden clashed with 15 slaying six. This might be the last of them, actually. Okay, slaying them. So now we're stealing books. That leads me to believe that that's probably all of them. I think we need a brave volunteer to go try and take this place. But they've stolen a bunch of books from there now. Also, if I scroll down to the bottom, did we get any loot as well? Uh, nope, just, just, this, just the books. So that was this location. I'm going to try and conquer and occupy this. I'm gonna send this squad, the Rough Caves, which currently has nobody in it, by the way. Now I need to find who I'm gonna put into the Rough cave, Caves. I need a volunteer. Um, Bamboo, are you currently insane? No. Uh, Bamboo, congratulations. Thank you very much for volunteering. Bamboo, I need you to go do the very important job of going to a place where people will like you more than here and um, go take over this place. Go seize it. Yes, Lucas Fox. So, also, I should send that squad back up. Yeah, so they are, <clears throat> they, the AI takes over. They don't build anything, but new people come and go. So, they do not add additions to what you've made, but new people come and go, and they do continue to exist. We are going to go smack into the Dwarven Fortress of, of the Crypt Order Standards. So this is the Rack of Lobsters, a Dwarven sieve that we are at war with. I almost think that the next fortress that we play in this world should be as the Rack of Lobsters. 
Okay. So they're going to go raid Aeroglazed. And this dwarf that we are following is going to go try and claim this fortress as theirs. Would make something out of your failed forts? Have you ever um, reclaimed an AI built fort? Trust me, theirs are worse than yours. Um, so I'm under the opinion right now that this dwarf failed because they almost immediately vanished. <laughs> Uh, well, we haven't seized, seized it yet, so maybe we need to go attack them again. Yeah, we'll see. If they, if they get back, if he comes back, if, if we find out in a minute, we find out in a minute. If we don't, we don't. All right. Let's trade. Today I learned if you search in the search function here, um, it sits there and stays as the cert last as the search function until the next time you trade. That's interesting. By the fish. By the meat. This is way too heavy for them, so I have to buy some heavy things from them. Picture 300 anvils in forges, bedrooms for 5,000, and pedestals and statues for everyone in the world. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, the the dwarven forts are kind of um, psychotic, I guess. But it's something that, like, they can't really improve until the map rewrite is done, and they're getting very close to that level. So once the map rewrite is is in the game, um, that, that will be less of a concern, I think. Just going to buy these anvils. That'll get me above the needed weight. There you go. Take him. Call it done so. The gem cutter has created Desorelum, a red zircon bracelet, and claims it as a personal treasure. Would you look at that? You claimed it as a personal treasure. Does that mean I put it in your bedroom, then? This is a red zircon bracelet. It's actually quite expensive. 25400 All craft store ship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with cave spider... Uh, Let's do that. Cave okay, spider silk and encircled with bands of mahogany, uh, mahogany and oval green glass cabochons. This object menaces with spikes of red zircon, black beak dog leather, and trifle pewter. On the item is an image of a mountain, and in red zircon, the mountain is the image of, is in is an image of the of a oval cabochon in granite. Wait, what? Sorry, I I, I melded two sentences together. On the item is an image of a mountain in red zircon. On the item is an image of an oval, oval cabochon in granite. On the item is an image of seas la leathered, the holiness of proliferating, pro 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 proliferating. I can read uh, the green glass ring in andesite. Okay, um, Cog, where'd you go? Where's your bedroom? Cog. Okay. Uh, C O G. What's your last name? There's a lot of cogs in this fort. M-E. There you are. Where's your bedroom? Well, where's your bedroom? There's your bedroom. Uh, we will give you one of these. Oh. I can remember what menu to type in. Uh, map rewrite le meaning changes of how the map is loaded. Right now, the map loads every single layer at the same time simultaneously, whether or not you can see it or not. The map rewrite will allow the game engine to be able to load and unload stuff from memory if you can't see it. It's weird that you asked me that question in the like YouTube chat a second time when I stated Leftover Pat. I would get to that after I got back my, from my break. Um...
the way my interviews work is I ask the questions. Tarn doesn't really look at the chat. So you, if you asked a question already, has been filtered. And I've got a list of questions that I will ask. And that's what we'll do. And if we desperately need more questions and we run out of time, or, or, and we still have tons of time left, then we can throw more questions in from chat. But it's very rare that we actually do that. And as far as um, what questions should you not ask? Well, I filtered out a lot of things that are super far down the line because we've covered a lot of this stuff, right? Like this is... I need to actually go back and count like the seventh or eighth one of these that I've done. And we've kind of covered a lot of stuff. And because the first one of these that I did, excuse me. The first one of these that I did was before this version, before version 50 was out during that development. The first like four or five of these that we did were purely Food on my microphone. God damn it. We're purely focused on the far off reaches uh, beyond uh, premium. And the reason for that was there wasn't much else to talk about, oddly enough. So it was very difficult to really find subjects because there wasn't anything actively happening in the game. But because we're through that now, I'm focusing on whatever the next update is. And we generally do these quarterly. Here's the thing, Manchuk. That's an extremely generic question. And I guarantee you his answer would probably... And I've asked him questions similar to that before in previous interviews. And his response probably would be... Oh, I don't know. Lots of things. Right? Um, if you want to hear that response, go listen to the one that came out right after Fortress Mode. Because I'm pretty sure he answered that exact question. Let me go put this in the sink. Give me a sec. Yeah, render tendon is pretty, is pretty on point there. Something else that I think is really funny as well um, is people always ask, like, what is your favorite thing that people have done with the game? As in, like, what is your favorite player creation? And, the, the resp and I always get, like, a dozen variations on that question from the document that I put out. I asked it once, and I don't think I'll ever ask it again because the response quite literally was, if I played favorites... That would cause jealousy within the community. But we've seen lots of really cool things that people have made over the years. So it's like, why would I need to answer that question? It's like, I can tell you what the answer is going to be. Was I nervous the first time I interviewed Tarm? Um, I had a panic attack. <laughs> Maybe two. Um, yes. <laughs> would be the simple version. It's pretty casual at this point, because I've done it enough times. But at least early on... Yeah. It helped that I'd already met him in person, though. Because I met him at PAX that year. Yeah, Tarn does have quite the resume, doesn't he? <clears throat> I love how I'm, I'm just, like, accruing more barons that just don't live here. So I think that this squad died. Oh, wait, did I not just send you out again? Yep, and they got back way faster than I thought. Uh, the Veiled Halls attacked the Order Crypt of Standards at the Rack of Lobsters at Arrows Glazed, and the Dwarf Vanori led the attack. Um, Vanori outmatched. The human Rickle page flashes with a cunning plan, and the attackers had a strong position on advantage. We ably led them. 
Clash with some goblins, clash with some dwarves. My elephant is slaying a bunch of dwarves. One of my dragons uh, struck down the human leader. Um, the mysterious slaughter... Oh, hey, we're looting stuff. Look at that. He already looted a bunch of things. Hmm. Let's try and raise this place. Get rid of this mission for, for this empty squad. Look at this. This this elephant right here. Five kills, one notable. How about you? Eleven kills. Look at that. What about you right here? Rockust. One and four other. Not bad. Some migrants have arrived despite the danger. I would start moving here too if I was part of the other faction even. Ooh, you have poor empathy? Prone to discord, Arr, slow to hate. In um, eight minutes here, I have to make a uh, Reddit thread, actually. About the chat today. No, it's all good, Pat, it's all good. It was, I was just kind of half waiting for you to pop up in this chat to like respond to your question. And then I see you over the other one, I'm like, what? <laughs> Also, I don't have timestamps in the YouTube chat. I do have timestamps on Twitch chat, which is odd for me because I'll I'll worry that like, oh, did you write that one first? Crap! Like, did did I make you wait way too long? Uh, kill some things out. Oh, you're an axe dwarf. Oh. Go join the other squad, please. Also, another thing about attacking enemy locations is it can actually speed up, or, sorry, not speed up, slow down the rate of enemy sieges. Also, I'm going to make, like, 30 copper flasks. Uh, yes, it can also do the opposite, but if you're attacking them enough, it depletes their soldiers. Rumor of our community's acclaim spreads. All right, well, while this is going through, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna quick, quickly go post or get a Reddit thread ready to post. Gross. Okay, can you, there. Also, just as a reminder for those of you who missed me mentioning it in passing earlier, um, it's not just Tarn joining me, it's Tarn and Zach. Zach will be taking part in this one. Uh, the way these work, if you're new to these, is uh, I just turn my camera off, so it'll just be voices. Just setting up a Reddit thread right now. That is a bummer, Winter Z. Although, unless your like meeting is an hour and a half to two hours, um, then I think you should be good.
Okay. Alrighty, well, it's against uh, Reddit's BS rules, uh, but um, if you would like to uh, interact with a Reddit thread that is completely unrelated to my stream, there is a link. <laughs> Please don't tell the Reddit cops. Alright. And I'm going to send this to Kleno, who is apparently on a family thing. Something else I need, I need to ask Tarn too is about Legends exports. Very commonly asked one. Okay. They've all left the map. Sweet. You can jump back up here. Reddit, I know how you feel. Do ages have a huge impact on worlds? You mean like the age of so-and-so and so-and-so? -and -so? Or like the age of myth or the age of legends? It's less of an impact and more of a descriptor of the current state of the world, if that makes sense. Because it does, like the age itself doesn't have an impact, but the age explains what the world is currently like. There's a, a list on the wiki of exactly what they all do, but it, like it's how many titans are still alive, how many factions are still alive. Um, if it's the age of so and so and so and so, then likely um, that faction has died off quite a bit. Stuff like that. Yeah. Does it? It it does. The age itself doesn't have an impact on the world. It explains to the player what the current state of the world is at a glance, basically. Go up to here. I do this, except I'm not going to do that. Got to get a weird age. I had the age of death once, which was kind of ironic because I generated a pocket world up to the age of up to the year 2020. <laughs> Because I was bored one afternoon and was fiddling around a little bit with um, with Advanced World Gen off stream. I was curious how long uh, or if I could figure out how to make a world generate, and it was the year 2020. I was like, well, make a, let's see if I could do that. How'd that not crash? <laughs> it was really quick, too. That's the only time I've ever seen Age of Death. The other thing I want to do, aside from that, is go up to here. Let's cover more of this with glass. Yeah, I don't know. The thing that I always like to remind people is, with the exception of, like, World Gen back in the day, or not, not well, actually, let's not make any exceptions. Um, the current state of Dwarf Fortress is actually shockingly stable. Outside of, like, you know, when there's experimental branches and whatnot. It's actually a pretty stable game. Considering all of the stuff that it's doing under the hood all the time... It's a pretty surprising thing that the game runs as well as it does. Let's also maybe mine this up. I don't know. Maybe just start building slate walls around this part. Yeah, but like, what do you define as a good bit, right? I'm I'm just kind of referring to like the majority of video games in general, right? And like, I'll read a review of like, let's just say Alan Wake 2, pretty recent release, right? And in the review, they mentioned that during their 40 hour playthrough, the game crashed five times. That is more frequent crashing, at least for me, um, than Dwarf Fortress does. Like, for me, Dwarf Fortress crashes maybe once every 100 hours. Unless I'm playing on an experimental branch, at which point, yeah, then it's way more frequent. <laughs> which is, like, weirdly stable. The vast majority of the crashes in older versions of the game 
weren't actually caused by the game itself crashing. The game itself was always pretty stable, again, with some ex exceptions for like recent releases. Um, but older versions of the game, most of the crashes were caused by... <clears throat> uh, There is a skeleton right there that I need to dispose of. Um, most of most crashes in older versions of the game were caused by um, third-party plugins uh, connected to DF Hack. So, like, how do I word this? I'm just gonna do this. This is kind of cheating, but I'm gonna do it. Uh. Garbage dump right here. We're going to have to deal with this later. Um, related to DFX. So things like text will be text was a pretty egregious one. But that, that's the thing, though, is because a lot of people who say that it used to be way worse. I disagree, right? Um, I certainly had some weird crashes in older versions of the game, but at least in my experience, it was always around the same as it is right now. Um, with recent updates aside because there would always be a bunch of new crashes when a recent update would come out older versions of the game in my experience crashed a lot if you used text will be text nine seventy days really got a lot of crashes back in there i never owned a a, a nine series card I, I was on a seven series card and then i jumped to a 10 series card when the 20 series cards came out now I'm on a 30 series card shortly after the 40 series cards came out. Do you see like a, uh, a pattern here, perhaps? Are you supposed to be leaving the map? Or did you guys... Oh, they just came back. Sweet. Let's see how this... This is attempting to raise this location. So we attacked them. Um, of course, Vanori led the attack. Um, the defenders were led by the dwarf Stinthad Salvlost in the late autumn of 537. Uh, Stakud uh, outmatched the Dwarf Vanori and uh, uh, the Walled Shields of Death with a cunning plan, and the defenders had a strong positional advantage. Speaking of crashes, uh, the way I'm going to do the background for this one is I'm going to make a large world in custom world gen and just set it to generate for, um, let's just say, 1,500 years and see if it can. It's kind of amazing how quickly world gen operates now, though. Ooh, this is, like, going a little pretty even. There you go. Dragons are pulling their weight here. Because it used to take me, like, a full four hours to generate a 500-year-old old world. That's large. Now it's like I can do 500 years of a large world in, like, ten minutes. <laughs> All right. We searched it. Did we rampage throughout? No, we, so we didn't actually raise it, but we... Oh, no, we did. We destroyed... Wow, I feel kind of mean. We just destroyed a Dwarven Hillix chat. Wow. <laughs> I feel actually kind of bad about that one. All right, let's go... This is where I got all of the dragons from. This is going to be the test of our steel. As for the Dwarven Helix, yes. Also, we're in an ad break right now. There we go. Anori's back. Actually, missions. There we go. We're just going to steal livestock if we get any loot. All right, chat. This place is the place that kept one of my soldiers captive for 11 years. So right now I would like to get a vile force of darkness in the chat. And then after they come back from this siege, I will set up for the interview. All right.
Go pillage flea poison. Can you remember the day of kick? I remember like somebody in chat saying like, I'm going to turn on world gen and then go to bed <laughs> and see if it's still running the next day. And there was one person who was trying to generate a world for 30,000 years. The dra this dragon just came back from war and fucking murdered a chinchilla. <laughs> the war cave dragon claws the chinchilla in the upper body, tearing the muscle and tearing apart the heart. An artery has been opened by the attack, and a major artery has been opened by the attack. The chinchilla was propelled away by the blow, the poor bastard. <laughs> you poor little floof ball. Wow. What a guy. Poor Chinchi. Man. Oh, boy. That's something. Hey, Duke. What's up, dude? Jeez. Dragon has no chilla. Neither does the chin. Oh, Udil's gonna go take a nap. God damn it. Turn off my groove here. You're getting provisions? Well, fair enough. Grabbing some chopped elephant li 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 liver and uh, also grab a yellow bullhead roast for the road, which of course is an exceptionally prepared yellow bullhead uh, roast. All the ingredients are minced, prepared, uh, beak dog brain, min masterfully minced cave lobster, and exceptionally minced black bullhead. What's a black? That's a fish, right? Black bullhead? So it's like a fish meats dish. Also has a lung. <laughs> Uncooked lung. Little surf and turf. Pretty much, yeah, actually, that's a good way of putting it. Like a, a DF surf and turf. More like a surf and turf. <laughs> now I'd like to see a dwarf surfing. <laughs> Maybe when we get boats. I am very excited to see something tomorrow, chat. Really excited to see what the retention time is on that YouTube video I uploaded this morning. Because YouTube really wants you to put timestamps in videos. Um, and I kind of expect that a large portion of the people who watched that video just jumped to one of the timestamps, saw the conclusion, and were like, fuck this guy. <laughs> that's, that's kind of my assumption right about now. It's kind of my assumption. All right, well, now we wait. As we wait for you, Dill, to leave the map. Oh, there you go. Nice and quick. That's some mush and go, oh boy, my favorite. Yeah, they're, they like the, the chicken in the Matrix. Because it tastes like chicken, right? Mush eater. Mush is delish, though. Bullhead is the same as a catfish. All right. There you go. Learn something every day. Smarter every day, even. That or dumber every hour. It's one of the two. All right, Foggy Picks, how are you doing here, dwarf? Atis, this dwarf was pretty pissed. They've given you a, a break. Oh, you're still kind of pissed. <laughs> Don't have enough family, you want to pray. I mean, you could just go pray, but... I gather you're too busy constructing stuff. I, I will remove you from other jobs and let you go do what you want to do. I want this captain to be happy. We 
least he gets to say in the afterlife, life, uh, hey, hey, don't mess with me in my last life. It took a dragon to kill me off. Yeah. Worst ways to go out, that's for sure. What are you doing? Dwarf? Detan flesh metals? Sometimes I just read names and go, that is disturbing. No, you're just like stuck in analysis paralysis, I suppose. Cog Thief Stealer. That's a name. I apparently have a Mark's Dwarf ghost in my fort. Olontobul. Olontobul. Apparently on the wiki, if they're named like that, it's it's highly likely they're actually there to steal. I've learned something about characters in Dwarf Fortress over the years, and that's, while they can be very creative, they're not very creative. Like, they're pretty literal in a lot of ways. <laughs> um, <laughs> and if somebody is named something like that, yeah, I would also interrogate them immediately. It's just like if somebody was a former prisoner somewhere and they show up as a migrant, I'm like, you vampire. Uh, zero, I think the zero kill thing has been fixed. I haven't seen zero kill since before they... The, the, I haven't seen zero kill since this patch hit. I also haven't found a vampire. I, I've, I've had some vampires, I just haven't found them. Fifteen minutes, friends. Fifteen minutes. I'm gonna have to take a toilet break before we go. But... Waiting for this done. Oh, no. That's a bad sign. <laughs> I look over at the squad and a bunch of them have disappeared. Ugh. Gotta say, I think engraving slabs might actually be one of the slowest jobs in the game. I wonder what actually is the, like, mo like highest time-consuming job for a dwarf to complete in a game, like, not including strange moods. Just in time, welcome back, group. It's good to see you again. So I like the fact that the suited giraffe has no ability to use his arms, hangs out in the tavern watching performances and performing and socializing, completely naked, wearing two crowns. At least you were able to put on two very finely crafted crowns before uh, you lost your ability to use your hands <laughs> and stand also. <laughs> True, cotton candy's really fucking slow. Anything at, like adamant strands related and metal cloth related is really slow. A section of cavern has collapsed. Uh. Well, that seemed painful. Bertram got thrown backwards. Okay, so some, one of these collapsed. Uh, as, oh, I see why. This one's about... Wait, dip, 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 dip. Pause. Pause game. Do, 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 do not actually do that, please. Because that will cave in on you and that will kill you. Uh, this is safe, though. Actually, they shouldn't be doing this. They should be channeling them up. Uh, no, they shouldn't be doing that either. Let's just not take this down right now. We'll worry about that later. Okay, well, the squads have returned. Clearly, they lost because they've lost soldiers, but let's see how this went. This was us attempting to attack one of the bigger goblin strongholds. The Veiled Halls. 
attacked the evil poisons of the barricaded ghoul at Flea Poison. Vanori led the attack, and the defenders were led by the goblin Rort. Uh, the goblin Rort outmatched the dwarf Vanori, and the defenders had a strong positional advantage in Flea Poison. At least we got Vanori back, so that's good. Almost immediately, Aral was struck down by a blind cave ogre. Um, we also lost Yushirir and Udil to cave ogres. Uh, then the fighting kicked off, and we seemed to get a chance again. Uh, the actual goblin leader was struck down by a cave dragon. I call that a win. Uh, the Another goblin was struck down. Another goblin was struck down. Uh, another goblin struck down. Lots of named goblins getting taken down by my cave dragons, so that's good. Blind cave ogres are huge. We did... Oh, no, we're losing dragons. Oh, sorry, no, we lo we're losing elephants to cave dragons and dragons to dragons. Dragons to dragons, dust to dust. Well, I mean, that could have gone a lot worse. We still have elephants, we still have dragons. We didn't lose the entirety of the squad. I think it's time to regroup this squad, re repower it up, get more legendary fighters into it, and then get back out there. But... That'll have to wait until next week. Because it's time for me to prep for an interview. I got 10 minutes. So, just for the sake of the VOD, if you guys would like to say goodbye to the VOD, you can do that now because YouTube is sticking around because uh, we're just a couple minutes away from A12 Games joining us. Just a couple minutes away. And um, thank you very much to everybody who's interacted with the uh, Reddit thread. I'm putting a marker down so I know where to cut it. All right, so if you would like to use any text-to-speech, do it now. Please. I'm going to go use the toilet and grab me another energy drink. And then we'll get started. Cheese for everyone! Over here, he has a sword! Sandwich! <laughs> 